a production of Hockey Night in Oswego. Only on WTOP. It's playoff hockey season live from the Owl Roker studio. Usually we're over there at the perch, but we're a couple days early. We welcome you inside the Owl Roker studio for the pregame show. Jake Bradley alongside Mr. Luke Rosenthal, Mr. Tommy Tallarino, and gentlemen, to peel the curtain back a little bit, we're filming this a couple days in advance. Of course, busy weekend up here in Oswego. We got SUNYAC men's basketball coverage, and of course, we're bringing you coverage of men's hockey. So, in order to get this in, we had to, you know, take some time out of our, of our bedtimes, come in here, and film this for you guys tonight. So, this is a one in a lifetime occasion here for the fans at home. We welcome you inside the Oracle Studio. Gentlemen, playoff hockey, how are you guys feeling? Playoff hockey, you couldn't be more excited to be here right now. Obviously, no fans here, so it's a little bit of a weird environment, a little bit of a weird atmosphere. But it's gold rush season, season here in the Deb, here in the Al Roker studio. As you can see, our gold pom-poms that are a little bit orange. But yeah, couldn't be happier to be here right here in Al Roker studio with you guys. Yeah, we broke the fourth wall a little bit <laughs> with uh, the studio pregame show. But uh, Swigo hockey, it's heating up. We got electricity brewing here Ooh. in Oswego. I don't have goosebumps right now just because it's a couple days Wait out. A little bit. But Welcome. We're only like 48 hours away from this from this puck drop. Maybe the goosebumps will come by then. But just a little fun fact for everybody at home. The last time Buffalo State and Oswego faced each other in the playoffs was actually back in 2017. So this is a matchup that we haven't seen in quite some time. And gentlemen, the cool part about that is that the last time that these two teams met, it was almost it was the exact same playoff bracket. Plattsburgh in first. Or I'm sorry, Genesee, Oswego in first, Genesee in third, Plattsburgh in second, and Buff State coming to take on Oswego. So, gentlemen, it's been a while, but I just want to get your guys' thoughts on that that rivalry and that matchup from 2017 being recreated here tonight. Yeah, real interesting how history repeats itself. You know, five years, six years later, now in 2023, they've had some great battles this past season. It was a both wins by Oswego, a seven to one, and then a five to three. But I'm I'm interested to see how this one plays out, Tommy. The world works mysterious ways, fellas. I think this is a uh this is great. You know, we get a little rewrite of 2017. Uh, let's see what a Oswego can do of it. Well, gentlemen, playoff hockey is playoff hockey. It doesn't get much bigger than this. Our very own Thomas Turgeon made a little package on this. The Oswego State Lakers are Zodiac <laughs> regular season <laughs> champions. For the first time since 2018, the Oswego State men's hockey team enters the playoff with a conference title. The number one seed in the Suniac, now with the first round bye, will await Buffalo State after their victory against Cortland on Wednesday. As for defenseman Ryan Dickinson, he is fully aware that the assignment is not complete without at least a tournament championship. Uh, to win a regular season title, like that's, that's something pretty special that we're proud of. Uh, we understand the job's not done and you know we just uh, we want to fight for another day with each other, so we're really excited. However, for head coach Ed Gosick, he is aware that one of the key factors going into this time of the year will be how they are in the man advantage as well as the penalty kill. It's the difference in the outcome. So your PK and your power play, they have to both uh, be on. They reach the, the percentages that or be better than our opponents. You know, the odds of being successful are pretty good. And as for the captain of the Lakers, he looks to avoid one final trip down this tunnel as the lights go down, minutes to puck drop on Saturday night. We're getting hot going into it, going in the past four. Uh, team's ready, we're geared up, you know, we're a family in there. Real excited to go to war together. Four teams left, only two teams will remain after Saturday night. All in for one title, SUNYAC champion. Thomas Turgeon, Oswego Now. Playoff hockey season is here, gentlemen. It doesn't get much bigger than this, but we're going to have to throw it to a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little about, about both teams' last times out and give you a little bit more on the standings. We'll be right back on WTOP Tech. Say, President Stanley, whenever there's bad weather, who would you turn to? I'd turn to Storm Team 10. No, right but here. you've got to say it like this. Storm Team 10. Say it with me. Storm, Storm Team 10. 
Roll it. Jill told me it was Kitty from Glee. Yeah, what it's is it? Al Roker. <laughs> We welcome you back to the pregame show. Not too many fans there yet, but no need to worry. Oswego State fans, they'll be filing in in a little bit less than 48 hours. But we welcome you back inside the Al Roker studio. Jacob Bradley alongside Luke Rosenthal and Tommy Tallarino. And gentlemen, Oswego got to watch some hockey this week, much like we normally do on a weekly basis. Oswego got to sit back and watch with that first round by, of course, finishing first in the SUNYAC. So I want to get your guys' opinion about how important it is for Oswego to have that first round by. Not only that, but being the first seed, had that home, home ice advantage. Absolutely. First off, been a while since they've had that first round by. It's been, you know, six years around there. But they're coming off back-to-back -back games just last weekend. You got, you got uh, Fredonia and then you have Buff State. So they're tired. They need that rest yeah. as much as they can. Hockey's a tough sport. I never played it. I will never play it for a reason. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they're going to need that rest, and it's going to be important to, uh, for this upcoming game. Yeah, you know, it's very important that you're well-rested. And I think the big thing is they don't have to go and travel on a bus. You know, when you're going off the bus, there's a chance you get dead legs. Mm. They get to relax in their own homes and go straight to the ice. I think that's the most important thing. Absolutely. You're most comfortable at home. Speaking of the last time the Lakers were out there, we'll take a look at that right now. The Lakers took on those Fredonia Blue Devils. And you know what, gentlemen? It's been a long time since I've seen a game like that. The Oswego Lakers, if you want to go into the playoffs with any better game, what better game could you ask for them than from last Saturday night? Oh, 100%. Oswego comes out with the 9-0 victory, 9-zip. Cal Shell with the shutout. We were all thinking that Eric Green was going to get in because it was senior night, but no, Eric Green, senior leader on this team, he said, I want Cal Shell to have that shutout, and he absolutely did. Connor Smart scored three. Cahill had a goal. Semrad had a goal. DiCarlo, Clegg, Addison, Colabufo, all with goals. It was an incredible performance. Something unlike I've seen before. And Tommy, game. you look right there at just the absolute lopsided nature that that game was. 55 shots as we go put up. Scoring, finding the back of the net nine times. I mean, those are some good numbers right there. Yeah, I think this is one of the best offensive games the Swigos had all year. And I think what stood out the most is every line stepped up and scored in this one. We saw that Coach Gosek during the press conferences talked about, you know, this year it's not where it's just one or two lines doing all the scoring. All these lines are chipping in, and you're seeing a lot more teamwork out of this team. Absolutely, and we'll take a look right now at those standings, the which are now officially and finalized. As far as the regular season, of course, Oswego State with that win, picked up the victory, finished number one with those 26 points, Plattsburgh in second, Geneseo in third. And of course, that really gives you the idea of what that playoff scene is going to look like. And obviously we know who, who who's advancing now. So Luke Rosenthal, it's a little bit of a different Suniac this year. Oswego State winds up getting the, getting the number one spot. Yeah, not something that we're generally used to. Geneseo has been running the Suniac for the past few years here. Buffalo State coming out of nowhere, upsetting Corlin. Some would call it an upset, some would call it Hey, it was coming. Yeah. It was coming sooner rather than later. Great Suniac here, Plattsburgh Geneseo, Battle of Goliaths. It's going to be a tough one. Yeah, and you know what's crazy is, if you think about it, the Geneseo overtime loss and the Cortland overtime loss actually helped the Swigo in this one. They ended up earning a point in both of those games, and that helped them get an edge above Plattsburgh like we saw. Well, we talk about how deep that Suniac is. Coach Gosick had this to say about just how every single team in the playoffs this year has a real chance to take a home goal. You know, hey, whoever we face, it's all about us and how we play. They're all good opponents. They're all capable of coming in here and knocking us off. We have to execute um, and have the work ethic and the discipline to get it done this time of year. 
Well, we've talked a lot about those Oswego State Lakers. Let's take a look at what their opponents have been up to. Buffalo State, we mentioned that game, that little upset against Cortland. As we see right here, just this, what happened in that game. Uh, just an absolute barn burner for both sides. And yeah, like you mentioned, Luke Rose, a little bit of an upset alert. A little bit of an upset. These two teams went back and forth all season long. Aiden Lavelli scores the opening goal just 17 seconds into it. And he got it started early for Buffalo State. Buffalo State was going... They were up 3-0 going into the last period. Cortland needing a comeback, couldn't quite get it. Just scores two goals, one short. Buffalo State, only one power play in this one, so it was a clean game for the most part, but look at those fans going crazy in Cortland there. Couldn't quite pull it up. Yeah, this is something that this Buffalo State team did really well. They played off of their momentum. Yeah. They got off running fast. They had two goals in the first period. Didn't lose the lead the whole game. And Emil Norman, outstanding goalie play, 39 saves on the night. This is a team where you don't want the playmakers to strike fast at all because we saw how quick they shot the puck. Yeah. 15 shots the whole game, and they're walking away with a 3-2 win. They have enough playmakers on the offensive end, and then Emil Norman's doing a great job standing on his head making saves. This is a tough team that Lakers are going to have to prepare for. Yeah, if you covered up the score there and asked a, a fan with no prior knowledge who they think won that game, I think you'd be a fool not to say Cortland. Buffalo State somehow coming out of there with a the victory despite playing what some would argue the weaker offensive game. But now we're going to take a look at those playoff brackets, the updated playoff brackets. We see Oswego State and Buffalo State. They're going to be dueling it out. Plattsburgh and Geneseo, if Oswego State wins, they get the home ice advantage. If Plattsburgh wins and Oswego loses, Plattsburgh gets those. Uh, and obviously, higher numbers from there, you know, math, long time ago. But Luke Rosendahl, yeah. right there. That's what it looks like right now. That's what we're looking at. Pretty strong, if I do say so. Oh, very strong. Plattsburgh and Geneseo have given Oswego some fits, not just this year, but over the past several years. So, that, like I said earlier, battle of the Goliaths between the two seed and three seed there. Plattsburgh beating Geneseo every time they've played so far this season. And Tommy, Plattsburgh and Geneseo have always given Oswego a tough time, so we've got those two teams knowing. Obviously can't look past Buffalo, but when you do, you've got two more teams there that are just as strong to win the SUNYAC. Yeah, and I think what's great, as we talked about earlier, they're the one seed, so if they are going to play them, they're going to be on their home ice. We've seen what whiteouts are like yeah. against Plattsburgh. We saw how rowdy it was against Geneseo that last game. When they scored those three goals in the third period, the place was rocking. Unglued. Yes. Yes, and I think that's going to play a big factor in if they make it to the championship game. Absolutely. It should be interesting to see what comes next. But we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to discuss the backbone of this team. We're also going to take a look at the goalie matchup. And we're going to look at the last time these two teams played this season. All this and more coming up on WTOP Time. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. We're on that blank. Look at the blank. Look at the, do we got a diamond test drive? Yeah, that's getting bad. Yep. Ten out of ten connection. recommend on Yelp. I'm buzzed. I spent too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Nope. Kevin.
We welcome you back as we count down for us the days, but for you the minutes until puck drop for this SUNYAC semifinal matchup between the Buffalo State Bengals and the Oswego State Lakers. But we welcome you back into the Al Roker studio, Jake Bradley, Luke Rosenthal, Tommy Tallarino, bringing it back to you. But before we start talking a little bit, we want to talk about the backbone of this team, exactly what has, in a way, led them to where they are today. That would be freshman goaltender Cal Shell, our very own Jared Wakefield has more. It was unclear early on in the 2022-2023 Oswego hockey season just how much Cal Shell was going to play. Senior Eric Green and junior Richie Perrant started off the year ahead of Shell on the depth chart. Both Green and Perrant started on opening weekend as the Lakers split, dropping Green's start against Hobart and winning Perrant's start against Elmira. Next week was whiteout against Plattsburgh. It was Shell's turn. I always got to be ready as a goalie. You never know what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, once they said I was going, you know, my mind just kind of switched. All right, let's do this. Like, may as well go give it all I got. Shell's been off to the races since that win. Shell has started 19 of 22 games for the Lakers. Shell's guided the Lakers to many wins, including this past Saturday as the Lakers secured the top seed for the playoffs with a win over Fredonia. Shell is no stranger to the playoffs. He helped the Flynn Flon Bombers all the way to the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League Championship Finals, playing in 18 of 19 games. And yeah, I mean, it was nice uh, that we could, you know, do what we did last year. And, you know, I think it kind of helped put Flynn Flon on a bit of a bit of a map. Oswego is another one of those hockey towns full of history. And the Lakers, in their history, have found a lot of success with freshman goaltending. The last time the Lakers won the Suniac Championship back in 2014, Matt Zawadzki was in between the pipes for his freshman year. That wasn't just a Suniac Championship run either. The Lakers went all the way to the NCAA Frozen Four. Head coach Ed Gosick has seen the highs and lows of this team the past few years. With Shell, it's reiterated the importance of goaltending. They have to be your best penalty killer. They have to be your best player on the ice. And, uh, you know, when Kel's on, he gives us that, those opportunities to be successful. Playing in Oswego is like family for Shell. His sister Lauren is a defenseman for the women's hockey program. Family's important in this hockey town, and it seems like Shell has found a home. On Saturday, thousands will enter this home, hoping Shell will stop some pucks. From the rink, Jared Wakefield for WTOP 10. Awesome stuff right there from Mr. Wakefield. But we talk a little bit about goalies. Let's take a look at tonight's goalie matchup. We talk a lot about Cal Shell, but Emil Norman is one that we cannot sleep on here in Oswego. These two guys, not only two of the best that, that we've got in the SUNY, but almost two of the best of the country. I mean, Cal Shell made that all rookie team. Look at those stats right there from Emil Norman and the handlebar mustache on the guy. I mean, how are you? Incredible. Stud, first Incredible. of all. Incredible. But yeah, these, what a goalie matchup we're looking at here tonight, Tom. Yeah. Or Luke, whichever one of you oh, wants to speak. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, uh, go, go, go ahead, go ahead, Luke. Go ahead, Luke. <laughs> uh, two studs here. Sorry about that, Tommy. Too. You're good. Two studs here. And like uh, he said it in that promo right there, in that package, putting Flynn Flom Bombers on the map. Of course, you said that he put, or he made those all rookie Suniac honors. 0.942 save percentage, 520 saves on the year from the rookie. He's just like uh, the new or age version of Stephen Kozakowski, Absolutely. you could say, Tommy. He's the new Wizard of Cause. New Wizard say. of Cause. <laughs> but, uh, you know, one thing that Coach Gozik has talked about in the past this season, you need a save percentage around 93% yeah. to make a deep run into the SUNYACs and maybe to the NCAAs. Both those guys can do that for mm -hmm. you. One thing, uh, Norman, three Goalie of the Week awards, and Cal Shell, one of the rookie of, or, yes. All rookie teams. All rookie, all rookie. teams. Yep. Very important for both these teams. Both Absolutely. These and the last time Buffalo State played Oswego, we didn't see Emil Norman. No. One could argue that might be the reason why the Lakers walked away with the victory. We take a look at the last time out, the last time these two teams played, which was last Friday. Gentlemen, you guys were out there on the perch. Run me through what you guys saw. Yeah, not, not too long ago, just a few weeks ago, Oswego taking the 7-3 win over Buff State. Grimshaw had another hat trick. Bunker with a goal, Dickinson with a goal, Gato with a goal, Bull, all of them with goals, like you said earlier, Tommy T. Scoring's coming from everywhere. It's not just one line, and that's what this Oswego team has been so deadly with, is being able to shoot it from anywhere, any line, doesn't matter. Anybody could step up at any moment for this team. Yeah, all these guys are scoring, they're helping out, they're getting assists, you know, they're all having a positive impact on the offense. And Neil Norman, I think he would have, this would have been a lot different game if he was in goal. I don't yeah, think Oswego so. puts up seven. But I will say, Buffalo State, that first period, Joe Glamo 
playmaking machine. Yes. Mm. He had a backhand goal there. It was a wonderful goal. I think you're going to see a little bit more closer game this time. Yeah, you talk about Emil Norman and maybe the difference maker in that game. We saw how many shots he faced against Cortland and how little he let in. A lot of shots from the Lakers last time they played Buffalo State. So you got to wonder him and goal. Maybe we got a different story. But we're going to throw it to a quick break. When we come back, you already know what we're doing. Players to watch, picks, and puck drop. Make sure to stay tuned because we're never so closer to Suniac semifinal matchup right here at WTOP Town. Welcome back to Major Discussion. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cooked my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hey there, I'm Al Roker, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching <laughs> WTOP. We welcome you back to the pregame show as the anticipation continues to build a little bit less than 48 hours for us, but seconds for you at home. We get ready for puck drop. But before we get to that, gentlemen, let's get your players to watch. Luke Rose, I'll start with you. Who are you looking out for today at Buffalo State? Yeah, get the P's going. And you know who I'm picking? Number 18. I wore number 18 in high school, by the way, okay. lacrosse. Not to brag or anything. But number 18, <laughs> Joe Glamos. This guy was a freak of nature against Oswego last time. Two goals in their last game out. Two of the three goals that they scored. 32 points on the year. 12 goals 20 assists. He only has 15 goals in his career. 12 of them have come from just this season alone. Incredibly fast on the ice and is really solid when they're man in man-up situations as well. you got to look out everywhere for this guy, Tommy. He's not your average Joe Schmo. Not your that. average Joe. <laughs> um, I'm going Aiden LaValle. You know, he made the all-rookie Suniac team this year. Had the opening goal last game for the Bengals. He's one of those guys, you're not going to see him scoring a lot, but you're definitely going to see him setting up his teammates, mm. getting assists. He had two assists against the Lakers this year. I think you're going to be able to see him gain possessions out there for the Bengals, and he's going to make an impact in some way. As for the Lakers, you know, we talk about his brother a lot, Shane Bull. I'm going Noah Bull. Noah. He has made an impact this oh, year yeah. on the third and fourth line. He's got, you know, only four goals, three assists on the year. But... It's not all about the numbers. That's right. It's about what you do for the team. He provides the spark for the team, gains the extra possessions. He's like a flash out there on the ice, skating blue line to blue line. I'm excited to see what he does here tonight. Oh, that's a good pick. I don't know if it's as good as mine, though. I'm going, oh, <laughs> captain, my captain, Ryan Bunka, number 76. Guys, the reason why Bunka came back this year in the first place was to win a Suniac title. They have the one seed. They're kind of in the driver's seat right now. They don't want to lose out on this opportunity. He had a game or a goal last time out against Buffalo State. 13 points on the year. Little dip in production this season, but it, with that dip in production comes a huge boost in leadership for everyone on this team. He's the guy that look, everybody looks up to among that locker room. He's going to be a big reason why Oswego could come out with a win potentially. Absolutely. You want somebody 
like Ryan Bunka on your team if you're looking to make a deep Suniac run and potentially even further in the NCAAs. He has really put this team on his back as far as the captain stuff goes. You mentioned maybe he hasn't been as big of a factor as of late, but this dude has certainly been a reason why they're here today. But Absolutely. gentlemen, let's talk a little about the picks. The big question that's on everybody's mind who do you guys got tonight? Luke Rosenthal, what are you looking at, my friend? So, Coach Sean Murphy of the Buffalo State Bengals, after their win against Cortland, came out with a tweet. He tweeted just the shrug emoji, just like that, to the UCHO poll, saying that Cortland was going to win this game 3-1. to one. So they're coming in with that underdog mentality. So that must mean they're going to triumph over the Lakers, right? Wrong. Lakers are going to win 5-3. they got to put the underdogs down at some point. They want to get this win, want to host the SUNYAC championship, Tommy. Oh, my goodness. You, even, you pull out the shrug <laughs> and now the thumbs down. <laughs> I'm also going to go Lakers, though, in this one. I'm going 3-2. You know, Emil Norman is coming back in goal. I think it's going to help out a lot. You're not going to see seven goals, but there's potential on the offensive end for Oswego. Put up that number again. They had a wonderful time out there on the ice, but thumbs down. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, I, I'm looking at this kind of from a different perspective as you guys. You mentioned Emil Norman. That Cortland game was really telling for me. The amount of shots that he faced and the lack of goals he let in. So I'm going 2-1, though, Lakers. But special catch, overtime. 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 Free overtime. Free and this man, right, so this is the only way that I'm thinking this. I think it's just going to be a goalie matchup for the ages. Mm -hmm. One versus one the entire game. And I think the only way that the Lakers are going to get one in is just by using some quantity over quality. We're looking at some good shots, especially late in, and I just think eventually they're going to find the back of the net. And Cal Shell's been playing way too good as of late yeah. to be the reason why the Lakers lose this game. So, gentlemen, there it is. You have it from us. If you're watching at home, we want to first say thank you for dealing with everything that we've been throwing at you this weekend. But guess what? The reward is coming up next because Puck Drop with Kyle Spizak and Jared Wakefield from where the games actually happen, not here, but back in the dead. We'll come to you live on the other side of the break. Make sure to stay tuned. It is SUNYAC semi-final championship matchup, and it's coming your way, coming up on WTOP Time. Night in Oswego starts now. This is a production of Hockey Night in Oswego. Only on WTOP. It's playoff hockey season live from the Owl Lake Studio. Hey guys, it's me, Isabella Gomez, filling in for Smokey Bear because he's got more to say than just... Only you can prevent wildfires. Like, if you're outside enjoying a barbecue, don't let a hamburger distract you from fire safety. Make sure you aren't dumping your hot coals or ashes onto the ground because that could start a wildfire. So take wildfire prevention seriously and let's save the world one day at a time. Juntos con Smokey Bear, podemos hacerlo. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. foster care, I never knew when I would have to move, so I always had my suitcase ready to go. 
Then one day, I was adopted. My new parent. From back in time to real time, we're moments away from puck dropping the Deborah F. Stanley Ice Arena and Convocation Hall. And for the first time here in Oswego this year, it's playoff hockey. The Oswego State Lakers hosting the Buffalo State Bengals all the way from the 7-1-6. Hello and good afternoon, everybody, or good evening. Should I say a little rusty? I'm Jared Wakefield, joined by my longtime compatriot, Kyle Spizak. And Kyle, this is what we've been waiting for all year through whiteout, through into the night against Geneseo, through last week in Buffalo State and Fredonia, and Buff State's back in the house in the semifinals. Yeah, and I mean, you can't ask for anything better than this here tonight. I mean, the crowd is electric. It's loud in here. I can barely hear you, and you're standing right next to me, and that is exactly what you want out of a playoff hockey atmosphere. You cannot ask for anything better than this. And a matchup that we didn't see coming, really. I mean, last week, Buffalo State came in. They were lower down in the seating. We didn't think that they would come back here to the tab, but a week later, they're here, and puck drop's about to happen. Face-off won by Buffalo State after a scrum. Sardis for Buffalo State, the point leader in the Suniac, Nikita Kozirev. Joe Glamos in center. He punished the Lakers last time with a couple of points. And Aiden LaValle on the right wing. Defense is the top pair. Parker Allison, the captain, and Hayden Ford. Emil Norman in net this time. Liam Gross, the backup, started last game. Did not go super well. Shot right on shell right away. Buffalo State looking to start things off hot again like they did in Cortland. But nothing doing as shell covers the puck up. Down for a minute, but he will get back up after Joe Glamos ends up on top of him. No harm, no foul, just a little shoving. And we knew this one wasn't going to take long to get going. Immediately right off the drop, we saw how it was going in the last game. It got very chippy towards the end as the Lakers started running away with the lead last week. We know that Buffalo State was going to come out firing right away as quick as they could. And we're not even 30 seconds in, and it's already a stoppage on top of Shell. So we will see how that goes down as Im immediately and quarter battle and soon. The Lakers have survived the 17-second test. That's what Buffalo scored in, in Cortland, 17 seconds into the game. Scrum along the boards now. Battling for it and winning it is going to be Dickinson. Dickinson just barely finding the puck to Carlo to Shane Bolin. Here's Gatto with room. Gatto up to Bull. Puck sticked away. Bengals coming the other way. Chipped in by the Bengals. It's Michael McCosh there. Lakers will regroup. Bengals offer a quick change, very quick shift to open up play. Here's Dickinson firing on. Student section flinces. That was a pretty hard shot. Puck into the corner. Here's the Carlo behind the net, wrapping it around. And Norman off to cover the post. Oswego looking for their first shot. Bunkus shot blocked out in front. And here come the Bengals the other way. Morin checked up along the boards. And Grimshaw now out to play it. Grimshaw with a hat trick against Buffalo last weekend. He'll skate and pull up. <coughs> Drop for Flack. Flack up high. Drops for Robillard. Robillard over to Sleeth. Centering pass for Flack goes wide. Grimshaw, stick lifted. Keeps it in. Fires on. Blocked out in front. Went off of Flack. Now back into the corner it works. The Bengals. Figueroa. Top line now out. Bengals looking to break it out. Figueroa coming up the far side. Buck makes its way to Logar. Logar shoots blocked on. Fourth line for Oswego. Arcan in the play it. Robillard pinching up to play it. He's got Noah Bull and Smart with him. Noah Bull with the puck skating and drops for Smart. And Smart can't get his stick on the ice. Smart circling. The fourth line has been potent the last couple weeks. Here's Noah Bull for Smart. Out in front. Almost goes in off the skate of a Bengal. Loose puck, Norman, able to make the stop. That one's going to go down the length of the ice. Pick back up by Bull down in Oswego's own zone. Back behind the net, gets it off to Warmoth. Coming it up now is Arkin. Some interesting play here early, Kyle. Both teams going back and forth. Buffalo State gets the jump early, but Oswego... Seeming to find third gear here, find a gear to shift into, and they're starting to dominate zone time early. Yeah, they've gotten some really good looks. The puck movement looks fantastic, especially down in the offensive zone. They're working around the top very well. We saw some good D-to-D passes, and they're one of the crucial things that's going to have to keep going in this game for the Lakers is they are getting contact in front of the net. They're managing to find a way to break, break down the Buffalo State defense, find tiny slips in their defensive coverage and get the puck down in. I mean, we saw a great pass from Flack up in the middle, just a little bit wide, couldn't hit him. As Here's McQuaid's an man chance for the Lakers. It's McQuaid with Cahill and Smart. Weird pairing here. Smart going to be looking for a change as they go the other way. Cozy Rev 
Gets it up to Glamos. Glamos looking for a glamorous play, but instead Warmoth chips that one in. Credit to Michael Shetler. Cahill intercepts a puck out front. Shell played back in his net, did not get a stick on, and Calabufo in the forecheck. Blango just shellacks that puck off the boards. Calabufo battles. Cahill has it. Cahill to the honey hole. Drops for Semrad. Semrad shoots low and deflected out in front. Almost got to Norman. Semrad again. Won't keep it in. Dickinson out. Semrad will chip it in. Calabufo ties a player up. No call coming. Calabufo's stick got wrapped up with Glamos there. Thought there might have been a hook. No call. Just a good play there, putting the body on, creating some separation from the player in the puck. That was a good move to let Oswego get a little bit of momentum going into the zone. Buffalo State trying to regroup there as the hits get more physical. There's Shane Bull. Here comes Alex DiCarlo. DiCarlo shoots Norman. Save off the glass. Semrad back down low. DiCarlo has to dosey do with the referee. Bull. Up high to Semrad, pass is a little too hot. Semrad has to walk out. And the passing looks amazing from the Lakers right now, Jared. Just hard crisp passes that Shane are finding Bull, the Cutting tape. to the net, goes behind the net. Seen Shane Bull cut to the net before and do something there, Kyle. Semrad shot blocked out in front. But absolutely, Kyle, gotta agree with you. Passing so far good in Buff State. Little bad luck, they almost had to clear out of the neutral zone trying to regroup their own zone, excuse me. But the puck went off the back of the net and it intercepted that pass and allowed Alex Carl to make a play. Both trips go to BJ's for a wholesale change. Much needed line change on both sides. Both units have been out there quite a bit of time. Get some fresh legs out there. Try to get a little bit of a zone entry for the Lakers here. Cal Shell looking like a professional cricketer with a wicket. Sticking that one out of the air and playing it down so the Lakers could take it up. Here's Semrad dumping off down low for Bunka. The captain in his fifth year works it on up. Goes off the shoulder of Sleeth, a little saucer pass. This unidentified flying object will not be shot down, but Sleeth will shoot into the netting. And that one flew up like a UFO straight into the netting. Saucered right over. The Lakers, they're putting on good pressure so far, but Buffalo's defense has done a pretty good job as well. Shutting down opportunities, keeping them out to the outside for the majority of the shots they've gotten on net so far. And Norman's back in net, something that didn't happen last week. We didn't see Norman start. That's going to be a huge boost for the Bengals here tonight. One of the better goaltenders in the league leads the Suniac in saves, so the Lakers are really going to have to pepper him to be able to find the back of the net here. Oswego averaging about nine shots more per game than Buffalo State, but Buffalo State connecting a little bit better. Their shooting percentage on those shots, about 12%. Oswego's about 10. So look for Buffalo State to capitalize on less opportunities. They only had 15 shots against Cortland. But here's Arcan as the Lakers look to light the lamp. Arcan sends it out. Bunka in the umbrella is catching the puck right now. Down low for Smart. Smart circling up to the honey hole. Shoots through traffic. Blocked out. And here come the Bengals ready to pounce. It is chipped in by Cannon Bazal. Bazal in to play it. Bunka will stick that one on out. Connor Bazal, excuse me. And here's Jackson Arcan. A little one on two, a little do -si do by himself, takes it wide, cutting the net, backhand shot, gets to Norman, and Norman will cover it up. A good play there by Arkan, not a lot of options, the troops were not coming for reinforcement, so nice little backhand, just see what happens short side. Yeah, he's the only Laker going down, there's three Buffalo State defenders there clogging in the zone, he couldn't really cut inside, they did a great job keeping him outside, pushing him far, that backhand shot, a low angle shot, a low percentage shot, but... It's not to say that those can't go in. I mean, we saw Glamorous Joe net one over Shell last weekend on a backhand just like that on the other side of the ice. Absolutely. And something interesting to note, wow, Neil Norman's save percentage a little higher, 930, higher than Cal Shell. Here's a breakaway for Buffalo State. Skating in Oslo Valley, and he's sticked out wide. Warma quickly taking the puck out, looking to break out in a hurry, but Glamos in to play it. Here's Cozy Rep, Cozy Rep, dangling along the near side boards. Dangerous, 31 points so far this year. Barrett. Tying up the Bengals along the boards. Pucks behind the net. Cahill with a lot of room. Cahill, board pass. Up for Calabufo. McQuaid thought about sticking it, but sticked off. McQuaid will change. Calabufo shoots right off the glove of Norman. Another shot behind the net. Norman unable to corral the rebound. Calabufo taken to the boards. Drops his lumber. And the Bengals looking to carry it out. A little bit of trouble doing so. And the Bengals overskate the puck. And here's Calabufo. Three on two chance. Calabufo shoots. Blocker save Norman. And Calabufo, one of the hardest shots on this Lakers team. Never want to catch him with a bit of open ice where he can skate into his shot, get a lot more power behind it. But I want to take a minute, go back a few, go back a minute or two to that Buffalo State opportunity where they almost had a breakaway. What a back check from Matt McQuaid coming back, hustling and lifting up the stick, taking away a good shot from the Bengals. 
That's a huge one again. You know, Buffalo State, they capitalize. Chance to capitalize for Connor. Gato is sticked away as he loses that puck off the tape. Matt Morin chips that one up, but fortunately that puck not shot too hard, and the fan will go home with a little souvenir. Playing a little bit of self ping pong, throwing it up in the air, chipping it up, and it goes over the glass and back into the stands. We've mentioned it many times throughout the season, Jared. I mean, it's just been a ton of pucks flying into the up into the crowd as we take a look at the Arcan replay. He goes down. He does a good job going one hand on the stick, create separation, create as much of a distance between the the puck and the defender as he could. And another great shot from Kyle Buffo, too. One timer just wide from the point. Allison with an absolute ripper. Got through traffic. Buffalo State player down along the boards. Oswego's trapped the puck. Two Lakers on top of it, but battling in to take something happens. Andrew Logar. Logar will get the puck free, and now Ben Addison back down with Logar to chase it. Everybody thought the puck was free, but only Anderson and Logar seemed to know where the puck was. That one's centered on behind the net. Shell pushes across, looking for a behind the net play. It's Buffalo State looking to shoot on from the blue line again. Shot way wide into the corner. Cleats will do enough to get it out, and here's Tyler Flack on the forecheck. Flack getting a couple points last weekend, his first points of the year after being out to start the season. Addison in the chip that one. It's lethal play it. Gloves it down. It's lethal dangle. It's lethal dangle again. Sleeth Shicey here as he cuts to the short side. Flack leaves it for Grimshaw. Grimshaw holding from the slot. He shoots. What a save. Norman Puck comes loose. And a quick the whistle. Rink is the angry. Ref. And Buffalo State. Accosting Connor Sleep there just a little bit. A good stop by Norman, but after the whistle goes, the puck comes free. And the student section a little bit upset with the Bengals as we grab some changes and get a face off in the Buffalo zone. We take a look at that replay. What a play from Connor Sleep coming down, creating a bunch of separation, and Flack just a beautiful pass, dumps it through the legs of a Bengal, finds Grimshaw streaking down right in the middle. Good connection to the trailer. He gets a shot through traffic, ends up hitting the chest of Norman, but just a good hockey IQ play from the Lakers there, finding the open man and getting a good shot opportunity. Buffalo State looking for an opportunity. They were looking for a breakout pass, unable to do it, so they'll enter the zone as a unit. Robillard in the stick on it. Robillard pressured heavily. Noah Bull, nobody there to cover him. That one cleared out, and Buffalo State through the neutral zone looking to make something happen. Here's Ryan Bunka again. Near side up with the puck. Sticked away in the Bengals. Will regroup and reset. Leaving that puck on is Van Uden. And just shipping that one in will be Connor Bazal. So the Bengals make another trip. Go to a wholesale change. Parker Allison, the captain out. Arkham will grab a change. Icing waved off. That one stick by Cahill. That'll give the Bengals a chance. Two on two opportunity, Cozy Rev centering pass and losing his stick is Zach LaValle. That one's gonna go to be a slash on McQuaid. Yep, and you could tell that one from a mile away. The stick did not come from underneath. If you're gonna attack a player's stick, you have to go in through the triangle, the triangle being that shape it creates between the player's stick blade and their skates. McQuaid goes over the top there, chops it out of his hand like a lumberjack. He's gonna find himself in the box for two minutes. Lakers didn't want to find themselves down on the penalty kill, but now they got to kill it off for two minutes and rely on players like Shane Bull. And that was Aiden LaValle, excuse me, and you are correct. This Buffalo State power play is unreal this year. They lead the SUNYAC at almost 27%. Lakers penalty kill has improved, but it's still only 80% this year. McQuaid actually the leader for Oswego State in penalty minutes on the whole season, 33. Can add two more to that for 35. And a great player, just got to keep him out of the box. He's a lot more useful when he's on the ice, not in the box. He's a young player, though. Discipline something that comes with time, especially when you are a young player in the SUNYAC. Coming into D3 hockey, the players are a lot bigger, they're a lot more physical, and they're quicker. So you have to be able to keep your head. Absolutely there, and McQuaid. You know, he gets top minutes on this team on the top line, so you're losing not only one player, but you're losing a top liner. Face-off whistled off, they deem... Team that Oswego was not given enough time to change. Connor Sleeth was still skating off. Tough break for Oswego as Connor Smart had gone in to win that faceoff. This penalty kill unit, it's Connor Smart, Daniel Calabupo, Quinn Warmoth, and Troy Robel are two forwards and a defenseman. Cozy Rev out on the power play unit for Buffalo State. It makes sense. You want your top point scorer out there. Tyler Van Uden, Joe Glamos, the captain, Parker Allison. 
and trailing all the way up in the zone is Aiden LaValle. So all the top point scorers out here. If you looked at the stat sheet and had to draw up a power play unit, this is the one you draw up, and this is the one that Buffalo State is going to go with. Here's Glamos. Oh, Glamos deeks in. Shell out of his net to give a little poke check there. Looked like that could have been a bit more eventful, but played off his routine as now the puck's tied up along the boards. Puck's free. Calabufo and LaValle tied up behind the net. Glamos deeking around, sends it off the side of the net. Up to the point for Allison. Allison waiting, skating, turning. Gets it over across to Cozy Rev. Cozy Rev waits. Backhand passes up. And he'll get it to Van Uden. Van Uden waits, gets it down low off of the skate of Allison, and the Lakers will strike. Bengals unable to get anything cooking this power play, and Wormuth will send that one all the way down the ice. And a good usage of pressure there. The Lakers, normally you don't want to get caught with three players on the same side of the ice during a penalty kill, but it works out there as they match the numbers of the Buffalo State Bengals and are able to clear it down on a backhand from Wormuth. Buff State in their own zone, grabbing changes. Ten seconds to go on the power play for the Bengals. Dickinson fires that one down low. Norman will come out of his net to handle it. And that'll kill off the penalty. So the Oswego penalty kill gets another star on the board. They've had some pretty solid kills lately in the Lakers. Starting to find a little special team success later in the year as the game has uh, ground to a halt, Kyle. Taking a long time. Everybody got about two changes in there. No one figuring out who wants to go where. And that's going to go for icing. So we're not doing anything anytime soon. Yeah, like you said, I mean, it was a bit slow moment there, a lot of holding up back behind the net. But talking about the Lakers special teams this season, if there's any time that you want your special teams to get hot, it is right now. You want your entire roster to be absolutely rolling right now, whether it's a, a, man, to, a man down, you have to get going as we take a look over at Plattsburgh Geneseo here tonight. Plattsburgh is up on the board right now. They lead the Ice Knights 1-0. In a game that is just as important in this one here tonight as the winner of both games will be finding themselves in a SUNYAC championship location to be determined. Yeah, I will tell you that it won't be in Buffalo. Buff State unable to host regardless of what happens as the four seed, the lowest remaining seed in the tournament. Ryan Dickinson hit pretty hard behind the play, but here's Cahill with the play. Cahill shoots up into the netting. No souvenir. The netting does its job. Did a little work pregame to the netting to pull it down, get it right up. Flush with the top of the glass. Rinkford did a pretty good job, so that puck was stopped. And Tommy Cahill in the top of the slot is a scary sight to see if you're a goaltender. Take a look at that little toe drag release. The toe drag release hits the stick of a defender, skies up into the netting. Norman, thank Norman, thankful that he hasn't had to see that one coming in. And an interesting note, Buff State, although they have two shots in the game, neither one of them have been on goal. Haven't found the pads of Shell quite yet in this one, Jared. No, they have not in Cal Shell. I mean, his scariest moment so far was a poke check, really, coming out of the net to make a poke check play. And he didn't even drop into the butterfly. No sign of desperation. Just kind of waltzed out of the net and threw the stop sign up and checked that puck in and helped kill off that penalty. But the Lakers looking to make something happen as that's going to go all the way down the ice. Here's Shell. Shell puck handles forehand, backhand, sends it across for the captain. Bunka quickly up in a jam as the Bengals do something. No trip there as Bunka stick got tied up with Van Uden. Here's Gato. Gato behind the net, waits, shakes the four checker. DiCarlo won't shake the four checker though as Connor Bazal was there and Gato gonna take that puck in, coming out in front of the net, no Laker there. Gato looking to win the foot race, unable to do so. Good breakout pass, but not a big breakout. And Gato lays the body, taking Van Uden clean off the puck. And the Lakers will have to re-enter the zone through the skates. They do. Bunka tag-teamed along the boards. Puck comes down low, and Parker Allison will look to clear it out. Haven't seen a lot of the third and fourth line there, Kyle. Breakout pass off the stick of Van Uden. Good read, but Van Uden unable to handle it a bit too hot. And Kyle, haven't seen a whole lot of the third or fourth line yet. Really, it's been those top two lines dominating the minutes. Yeah, both. Both teams deciding to run with their top two lines. Not a bad idea at this part of the game, but you also have to keep in the back of your mind, you don't want to overplay them and start wearing them out this early on in the game as there's 6.54 left to go in the first period still. If you're wearing down your player's legs, how's that going to affect you come the third period? Especially the later half of the third period, you want your team to be as conditioned as possible, as recharged as possible going in those late stages of the games where that's going to really determine who wins this game so I think it's going to come down to a really a difference of what team has been conditioned more this season Jared 
And this third line for Oswego seeing a lot of times, especially on the faceoff, warm up from the honey hole pad, save Norman. Bouncing puck out in front, rebound, kicked away by Norchot, score! The Lakers are on the board, and who else but Tyler Flack? His first of the season, and the Lakers lead one to nothing at 6.33 in the first. And the sea of gold is going crazy right now. Tyler Flack missed a big part of the season due to injury, but he is here right in time. You couldn't have asked for better timing there. Good backdoor rebound pokes out as we take a look over here. Rebound flies up. Another rebound off the shot from Grimshaw, and Flack comes down in. Jay hooks it at the perfect time and is able to lift it over the pad of Norman. Gets Norman lacking, got his blocker down in the ice. He's trying to move, and Flack elevates it right over. Can't ask for a more textbook hockey play right there. And that fits the Lakers' run and gun strategy. Shane Bull's going to run and gun, cutting his way through, able to shake off the checker of Tyler Penry. That shot on behind the net. Shot score! Back to back! Alex DiCarlo with the goal! And this place erupts, the stands have filled in, and to see a golden pom-poms as Alex DeCaro, the alternate captain, the leading goal scorer, puts another one in the back of the net, and just like that, it's 2-0. And can we say deja vu real quick? Alex DeCaro gets his 13th goal of the year, and that was the same exact play that we just saw. Backdoor rebound, except this time, instead of Flack, a lefty, it's DeCarlo, a right-handed player. So he just gets to tap it in like it's absolutely nothing. And this is just like last weekend against the Bengals. We saw the Lakers score back-to-back -back extremely close. And what a play there for the Lakers. Getting the momentum bumping here in the deb with six minutes left to go. Two nothing. You know, we ain't seeing Cortland this year, but similar energy to the Suniac semifinal against Cortland last year. The Lakers putting on quick goals. The barn fills in by the end of the first period. So far an electric period as the Lakers keep Buff State in their own end. Didn't even get to announce the first goal yet as we'll get a quick icing stoppage. And Kyle, just tough luck on the defense there for Buffalo State. Van Uden, the only player there on the back door. And he just got beat by Flack. Yeah, I mean, Flack just, that was a smart play to come in when he did. He wasn't just camping back door. He would have got locked up if he did that as we take a look at this last play. I mean, that's a pass from Robillard. That goes off the end board, and it just happens to take the perfect angle, bounce off the end boards, lands right onto Carlos' stick. He couldn't have asked for a better Christmas present right there. I was going to say, that's like a backboard pass you'd see in Rocket League or something like that. Firing it off the backboard, and Robillard grabbing another assist. Kyle, we talked about at the start of this game how the defense had really been turning it up lately. You know, Quinn Warmoth had been the leading point guy in the defense, seeing a lot. We still haven't seen anything from Nolan Bear. We've seen a lot of defensive success, but he hasn't found his way onto the score chart just yet. I'm sure he'd like to tonight in a playoff atmosphere. But Ben Addison, Ryan Dickinson, Ryan Bunka, and Troy Robillard, even Drake Semrad, too, all had a night. Ryan Bunka leading the defense last weekend with five, five points. Yeah, and Bunka's just been a playmaker out there. Sorry, Dickinson's been a playmaker out there all, all the last couple of weekends, honestly. He's just been getting good shots on net, allowing his team to scrum in front of the net, bang home the second chance opportunity rebounds, or just facilitating the, facilitating the breakout back down in his own zone. He'll get a good breakout pass, and the Lakers, we know that they're a dangerous team when they're on the rush. We've seen a few plays in the last couple of weeks where they'll be coming down, they get that backdoor pass, or they just move it around in front while the other team is sleeping because they've still got a player or two they got to catch up down in the zone. Lakers have been doing an amazing job going with that in the last couple of weeks. And that's something they want to keep going as Flack has a chance behind the third net now. Line. Third line's back out on the ice after finding success right away. Third and second line getting on the scoring chart. Ryan Dickinson gets that puck beat around him, but he's able to play the body well. Connor Bazal played away. And Dickinson able to take that puck out. Goes off a of Buffalo State stick, and here's Grimshaw, the third line coming in. Dickinson going to the net, but no pass is able to get there. Grimshaw holding, holding, will dump it down, and Dickinson and Grimshaw will race to get a change, but Grimshaw will race right to the net. Puck it with Warmoth. Warmoth shoots. What a save, Emil Norman. A nice read through traffic to catch it right in the cat logo. Big old meow for you. And another, another player that has been essential for the Lakers the last couple of weekends has been... Trent Grimshaw. Grimshaw had a hat trick against the Bengals last week and he's just been doing a fantastic job, whether it's getting shots on net. We saw the rebound chance came off, or Flax goal, the rebound chance came off of a shot from Grimshaw and he's just been doing a good job finding passes back door. The Lakers' third line has been electric as of late and that's something that the Lakers are going to need here in this playoff run 
is you don't want your top two lines only running efficiently. You want the entire depth chart in on it, and they've been doing that the last couple the last couple of outings they've had, whether it's Noah Bull on the fourth line, Trent Grimshaw on the third line. The whole team's been playing well. They have another interesting thing to note, Kyle, 4.15 to go. Buffalo State, not only have they not put a shot on goal yet, they have not put another shot in the vicinity of Cal Shell. When they get into the defensive zone, the Lakers have literally just shoved them to the boards pretty much. That shot blocked by Warmoth. And the four check's just been smothering the Bengals so far. You can see they're, they have two players on the puck at all times. And when you have two people coming at you immediately as soon as the puck gets on your stick, it's really hard to make a smart move. You get you get pressured, you start panicking a little bit, and it's hard to recover from that. Cutting to the net there is Jared Figueroa, unable to do anything. He'll get pickpocketed. It's a three-on-two opportunity. Shooting is Noah Bull, and he shoots wide. Ryan Bunka all the way back in the neutral zone in no man's land. He'll just loft that puck in. In the play, it is the captain, Allison. Extended minutes for Allison again, and I think, Kyle, you could see a little bit of that fatigue. Here's Robillard shoots. Nice block out in front. Blocked away by Anthony Morin. Yeah, and you're starting to see this Buffalo team, their legs are starting to get worn down a little bit. They're moving a bit slower. As Shane Bull's coming on with speed, though. They're changing way quicker. Oswego's used all four lines, that fourth line, too. Ed Gosick and John Whitelaw reading the players on the ice really well. They've gotten them out there when Buffalo State's under the zone. Ryan Bunka shoots just over the top corner of the net off the backboard. Here's Shane Bull. That puck gets to Glamos. Nothing going there. Coming out of this LaValle, and he's pickpocketed by Gato. Gato on a mission. It's a three-on-one. Bull over to DeCarlo, a bouncing puck. A good play by the only defender back on that, Dayton Todorov, to at least get something on that puck and prevent DeCarlo from getting an opportunity again. And like I just said, smothering forecheck. They are on Buffalo State the second they touch the puck. Not giving them any time to try to let the play develop, make a smart decision. It is on their stick, and they have to decide immediately. Icing was waved off and then waved back on, if that's a phrase. A little bit of Mr. Miyagi, wave on, wave Lines, off. Yeah, linesman down here, near side said no. The linesman on the far side said yes and blew the whistle and called it. Probably was an icing. Puck did not get chipped in the neutral zone at all. So we're going to Oswego's zone, and Buffalo State looking for their first shot on Cal Shell, but Oswego wins the faceoff, won't come here. So that puck's out in the neutral zone, and up to play it is Ryan Leonard. Now to Carlo. Carlo again, he holds, and a good opportunity, but he goes down to the ice. Sticked off that one. Air puck through the air. Ryan Dickinson in to tie up. Connor Bazal. Bazal having some good shifts here for the Bengals, but again, just a little bit of miscommunication. It seems like they're in the right spots, but Oswego out skating him. Here's Calabufo. He cuts to the net, loses the puck on the way. Good effort getting some stick moves in, create a little bit of space and keep the play going. Oh, Calabufo with a nice centering pass, nothing doing there, and Dickinson will chop that one in. Cahill in the four check. I would not want to deal with Tommy Cahill on a four check as a smaller guy. Going down hard is Calabufo, and here's the Bengals on a break. Van Uden shoots on, and Shell with a nice little glove save. It pops out, and he covers it. That's the first time Shell's been tested today, Kyle. Looking to go the long way around Shell was Van Uden, but Shell's able to get the glove up and make a nice save. Yeah, and that one goes straight towards the dome of Cal Shell. He's like, yeah, I'd rather not get hit in the face this early in the game. Gets the glove up there. Closes that one down. And Jared, one of the things I've noticed so far in this game is time and space. If you've ever played ice hockey growing up, you've had a coach grill you on time and space. You got to take it away from other teams, and a great save from Cal Shell there, keeping the play going. If you take away a team's time and space, you're going to make it hard for them to do absolutely anything. Massive save there by Shell. He got caught down on the pads, and the rebound came out at a pretty good angle for Buff State, and they shot it just over the toe cap. A lot of board tie-ups here, and again, Kyle, going back to it, Oswego holding the Bengals in the pounce. Here's a chance, trying to shoot on was Penry, and Shell will make the save. Nolan Barrett takes a player down. Everybody grabs a man, a little shoving. Shell swings the stick a little bit, and a little brouhaha here with a minute nine left to go. And, Barrett, and we're not done. And Barrett is still going at it. That Barrett and Figueroa going at one another, and honestly, that play doesn't happen if Barrett doesn't have that miscue in front of the net. That is a bad time to make a bad play. Misses it, puts it straight in the back of a Bengals leg. And then they have three players right in front of Shell by themselves. Shell thankfully stands up and stops the shot. But then, but then Barrett starts going at him after. You can't do that, especially at this part in the game. 
Puck side up along the boards again. Think the key for the Lakers there was that they broke up the Penry chance by himself. I think that's a surefire goal, but a little bit more time for help to get back. Speaking of help, Noah Bulls got help as he's checked in by Cozy Rev. Cozy Rev playing pretty physical, Kyle. You know, there's a stereotype in hockey. You see the smaller guy that's quick, you know, especially with a lot of points. You don't expect him to check, but Cozy Rev's been in there in the corners checking just as hard, and he and another Bengal have got Noah Bull all tied up. They've got a lasso right around him. Yeah, when I was growing up, we'd call that a pest, and Cozy Rev is a pest. He's a good player who gets, who ha he leads in points, so he's a solid offensive player, making assists, getting good shots on that too. But he is going to grind you down in the corners, and he's going to get in your head and try to t get you to take a stupid penalty. Cozy Rev looking to go near side with that pass. Instead, sends it up far side. Breakout pass is chipped. No, it is not. They'll wave off the icing. Got to say, the Buffalo State fans here, Kyle. That's a pretty long drive for them down 990, but. They have shown up. There's a little small segment down right in front of the Northeast Women's Hockey League logo. And a tough one for Oswego State Women's Hockey today as they fell to Cortland 2-1 to in double overtime. Lexi Levy clearing the 60 save mark. So have a day, Lexi Levy, putting it all out there. But we got it all going on down here, Kyle. We got a little, little, little Bengal pound down here. We even got someone in a Bengal costume. So got to love the fan spirit on both sides this afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, Tony the Tiger decided to come out here tonight as we got about four seconds left in. Just going to drain out the rest of the period as they toss it back and forth. And that does it for the first period of play here in the depth. Jared, I've been very vocal about the things I've noticed. I noticed Oswego has been skate playing extremely quick, taking away Buffalo State's opportunities to get anything going here, as well as putting on the pressure offensively in shots, 15 shots in the first period. That is outstanding. And not to mention just the forecheck, the pressure. They have two men on the two men on the puck at all times. Seems like Buffalo State's not able to get anything going. What's something Buffalo State has to change coming into the second period, in your opinion? I'm not sure. I mean, Buffalo State only has four shots on goal. Oswego only has ten, to be fair. But I think ten's a lot bigger than four. You need to test Cal Shell here. You know, they saw last time this that game was close in the first period. It was really close. It was tied. So I think they got to do something here, but the Lakers, a pretty thorough game played so far. So it'll be interesting to see what they do, but that's all for us for a moment here up in the booth. A few moments here, we're gonna get ready to send it down to our good friend, Michael Schettler, who's down in the tunnel, and he's got the first goal scorer for the Lakers, Mr. Tyler Flack down there with him. Shet, take it away. Thanks, Jared, always a pleasure. Tyler Fleck, pleasure to be here. First goal of the season, couldn't have came at a better time. What's your opening thoughts and what was going through your head when that happened? I mean, it feels good. It always feels good to get your first one. I mean, couldn't have came at a better time. This is the most uh, fun time of the season, so uh, we just got to keep doing what we're doing. Like, we're working hard. The last couple of games, we're finding it at the right time, so if we can keep that up, I think we'll be good. Absolutely. And uh, Buff State Bengals, second time in a week. How's that change the dynamic and your game plan going into tonight? I mean, you uh, you obviously do a little bit of video. You learn a little bit about the opponent, so you try to study them a little bit. But when you get out there, it's pretty much just a grind. Everyone's just working their hardest, and you got to make decisions on the fly. So, I mean, all you can do all of a sudden you want, but at the end of the day, you just got to go out there and work hard. Absolutely. And a hard-hitting question. Favorite grub spot after you uh, you seal a victory? Favorite what? Sorry? Favorite, favorite place to eat? Oh, Let's say cheap seats with the boys after the game. Cheap seats, so it's a good option. Hey, good luck out there. Thanks. Back to you, boys. Thank you very much, Spectacular Shetler. Fantastic interview down there with Tyler Flack. A little love for cheap seats. I will say pretty good wings. That's all for us, the boys in the booth here. Two nothing us. We go after one. Team Minnie's out on the ice shooting some T-shirts. We're going to shoot it to break, and we come back. We'll have the boys on the perch in real time this time. Jacob Bradley, oh, Luke Rosenthal, and Tommy T coming up next.
Hey guys, it's me, Isabella Gomez, filling in for Smokey Bear, because he's got more to say than just... Only you can prevent wildfires. Like, if you're outside enjoying a barbecue, don't let a hamburger distract you from fire safety. Make sure you aren't dumping your hot coals or ashes onto the ground, because that could start a wildfire. So take wildfire prevention seriously, and let's save the world one day at a time. Juntos con Smokey Bear, podemos hacerlo. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Say, President Stanley, whenever there's bad weather, who would you turn to? I'd turn to Storm Team 10. No, right but here. you've got to say it like this Storm Team 10. Say it with me Storm, Storm Team 10. Roll it. Jill Should told me it was him? Kitty from Glee. Yeah, what it's is it? It's Al Roker. <laughs> Live from the De Deborah F. Stanley Ice Arena, we welcome you finally in live and living color right here on the first Jacob Brown the Luke Rosenthal Town Tower Arena. We didn't take these clothes off for two whole days, ladies and gentlemen. Two whole days we've been sat here in our suits, but in a quick and fast-paced 20 minutes right there. The Lakers had that 2 nothing lead. Gentlemen, let's get your opening thoughts. Yeah, it was a great first period. Before we get into that, I just want to say a quick shout-out to Grandma and Grandpa. They're watching at home. Happy birthday, Grandma. Got to get that out. But, yeah, great <laughs> first period. Oswego for the first 10 minutes, a little bit stagnant, couldn't really get much going, and then immediately gets those two back-to-back -back points within 10 seconds of each other, Tommy. That's what winning teams do. It was like lightning struck twice oh, in yeah. like a minute. Oh, just yeah. like that. How are you? How but, are you? Uh, I mean, it was a great first period for the Lakers. Buffalo couldn't really get things going offensively, but I think we're in for another exciting Suniac matchup here tonight. It certainly looks like it. Let's take a look at those two goals from the Lakers. It was Tyler Flack. We just heard from him a couple minutes ago. Kicking things off, and then, of course, it's all reliable. Alex DiCarlo finding the back of the net for the second time. But, gentlemen, Tommy, why don't you walk me through some of these right here, bro? Yeah, we saw the Grimshaw rebound. Tyler Flack right there picks it up. One-timer goal, back of the net. And then you see for the second one, DiCarlo's going to get this one. Off the board, that's another one. That's 2 nothing. Emil Norman couldn't do anything on that one. The Alex DiCarlo, right place, right time. Yeah, Emil Norman, one of the best goalies in the Suniac. So he's not really used to giving up these many goals, at least this quickly, this early on yeah. in the game. So Oswego is going to be looking to build off this one into the second period, Jake. Yeah, he's absolutely played well outside of that 10 seconds. Take a look at the period summer right now and how these two teams are arguing up. Very one side of the Lakers, 20 shots overall, 10 on goal. 
just overall, the shots wise, it's coming in great quantity for the Lakers right now. Yeah, defensively, they've been outstanding, and that's something we've been accustomed to for this Lakers squad really the entire season. And they're not giving up many shots. Bengals need to get some more on goal, need to get some better puck possession. They just need, simply need to have better possession of the puck on the it, offensive end. It's shots on shots on shots here tonight in the depth for the Lakers and for the Bengals. Barely any offensive possession. I mean, Oswego is poke checking them and picking them out those pucks like they're picking tomatoes out of the garden. I mean, it's just an amazing tomatoes. defensive effort right there <laughs> by the Lakers. Well, you got, or you saw right there, the numbers don't lie. The Lakers have absolutely dominated in the shot total. Two names we haven't seen too much in the uh, the old orange and black out there are Joe Glamos and Kazarev, two of the top scorers, uh, not just for this team, but in the Suniak in general. Neither one has a shot on goal tonight. Almost been a little bit of a non-factor for this Buffalo State team. Two guys that they've really relied on all year. Yeah, Joe Glamos coming into this game just a few days ago when we he recorded the pre, uh, pre-show. pre He was my player to watch. He has 12 goals on the season, 20 assists. He's one of their best offensive weapons on this team. Great on fast breaks, great with the puck in his hands. Just hasn't gotten much to, uh, to speak for. Yeah, I think that's just a credit to Coach Gozak. He really had a good <laughs> game plan right there. He had a nice little kind of trap defense, it looked like, on the two playmakers. If we can put around two or three bodies on them where they can't get shots up, they might be home clear. Yeah, I mean, these two guys, if you're the Lakers, you, go, you want to keep them contained because if they start coming out to play right now, you get two guys out there that have proven that they are top scorers in the Suniac, that 2 nothing score quite quickly could become a 0-0 again. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Lakers are able to keep both Glamos and Kozarev in check throughout the game. But we're going to give you a quick update on what's going on in the North Country as Plattsburgh currently playing host to the absolute dominant Geneseo Ice Knights, at least in a couple years. But currently, Plattsburgh's on top right now, 1-0, 20 minutes of play underneath the belt for both these teams and you know if you're the Lakers currently with that 2-0 lead you're going to be watching real close in this game. Yeah sort of a flip-flop between this game and that game because this one like you said earlier shots on shots on shots this one's looking like a good night out I mean 29-21 to 21 for Plattsburgh. Plattsburgh up 1-0. Bennett Stockdale scored that one goal. Plattsburgh had, has had Geneseo's number this entire season and has had it in this first period so far. Luke you got me cracking up here <laughs> on there with the shots on shots on shots but I mean Plattsburgh they're taking advantage. They're going to hold on to that one goal game. I assure you, that is a very physical defensive game oh, right yeah. there in Plattsburgh. Bennett Stockdale's got the lone goal for the Cardinals right now. So that one, we're going to have to keep a close eye on. Of course, we'll give you updates as we hear them. But let's get back to the game that we have on tact. And gentlemen, I'm going to pose the question to the both of you. Lakers currently looking at a 2-0 lead, but this game's unlike any game they've played this year, knowing that there could be a trip and a ticket to the Suniac final coming their way. So with that 2 nothing score that they have right now how do the Lakers keep their composure for the next 40 minutes of ice time? It's important because this is an opportunity that the Lakers really haven't had in a while to be able to host a Suniac title game that's huge for this team. So how do you stay composed? You need to keep on doing what you're doing. Get the puck, move it around because they have a bunch of players on this team that can score at any different moment. They don't just have one person carrying the load. He's, they got to get it around to the to the rest of the team. Yeah, I think you're right there. You kind of you got to stick to the game plan. If it's not broken, don't fix it. No. Just keep it how it is. You know, there's a lot of veteran leadership on this team, so they know that there's a bigger prize after tonight. So, I mean, we've seen it right now. We know how physical. You mentioned the physicality that's probably going on up in the North Country. It's a very physical game that we've got going on right here. Only one penalty, so the refs are letting the boys play out there. But right now, just a lot of bodies hitting the ground, a lot of physicality. We saw a little bit of a big shuffle down here, and yeah. even Cal Shaw got a little, uh, a little Garrett, Garrett Chan fencing pokes in there. But... Uh, <laughs> But no, nonetheless, um, it's been very physical, guys. So you think that's, of course, with a game of this caliber, you know the physicality is going to keep up. Oh, absolutely. And you think maybe Buffalo State's coming a little little jealous because Oswego's really had their number their entire history between these two teams. They lead the series lead 53-4-5 all-time versus Buff State and have won the past few. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to cut you off. I'm wow. sorry. We gotta go. I know. Wow. Don't blame me. Wow. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have some 20 more minutes of ice time for you. Some playoff hockey back over there with good old Jerry Wakefield and Kyle Spizak. Make sure to stay tuned on the other side of the break right here on WTOP Time. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed.
Shine on that black. Look tablet. at the bling. Look at the, do we got a diamond test drop? Yeah, that's getting bad. <laughs> yep. Ten out of ten recommend on Yelp. I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Nope. Kevin! Welcome back to the Deborah F. Stanley Ice Arena and Convocation Halls. The Lakers and Buffalo State Bengals skate their way back out onto the ice, playing from different ends as the Lakers and Buffalo State get ready to go for period two in this SUNYAC semifinal. And Kyle, certainly an interesting one. We've seen the gold pom-poms twice so far as the Laker faithful get into the dubstep. But so far, it's been for the Lakers. 2-0 early in Buffalo State, getting to the net at the end, but unable to capitalize. Yeah, I mean, the Lakers came out on fire right away early on in this game. On the season, Norman's only averaging 273 goals against per game, and he's already let in two here in the first period. So we'll see if this Lakers' relentless offense can keep it going and push that total a little bit higher, throw the lead here more. And the defense has looked amazing for the Lakers, other than a few, a few mess-ups. I mean, we saw the Barrett mess-up earlier where they had a good shot on net. But other than that, really, the Lakers have been very sound in their own defensive end. Speaking of that, here comes skating in the Buffalo State Bengals. What a save by Sash Al. Oh my goodness gracious, a save so good, I lost my words. Skating in on that one was Aiden LaValle. And Cal Shell sticks that Bauer Hyperlight just out past the post and stops it. And almost another example of commentator's curse up here in the Steve Levy press box. I mean, Yeah, that's your fault. Yeah, that one's all on me. I got to take credit on that one. I said it, and then it happened immediately after. Oh, it happened again here, Kyle. Here's Cahill. Drops from McQuaid. McQuaid dangles. Cahill, I'm going to get it. Gato scores! Connor Gato jumps down on the Buffalo State defense, and the Alligator gives the Lakers a 3 to nothing lead. And guess what? Last Friday here in the Deb, Gato scores a second period goal against the Bengals. It's Freaky Friday. It's happening here again. Gato scores in the second period once more. Pokes that one through the five hole. A good rebound shot once again. That is three rebound goals here in the game for the Lakers. Just relentless offense being in the right place at the right time. They've been playing outstanding position-wise, and it has worked out amazing for them here in the last three games. And, you know, Connor Gato, one of those players who's been getting, getting top minutes, hasn't been able to capitalize, hasn't really been able to find it as a freshman. But now Gato in his last game, he's averaging about a goal a week as a Shane Bull shot. Deflected off. Bull the point leader for Oswego. To Carlo the goal leader. To Carlo more of a sharp shooter. Bull has been racking up apples like Johnny Appleseed. And Bull there with a good defensive play with his skate to skate that puck away. Steel hat, steel skate, doesn't really matter. Bull can do it all. Assisting it out on the apples and then defensively doing an amazing job back checking too. Here's Shane Bull behind the net, rotating around, drops it off down low for Flack. Few players going down. It's Shane Bull and Todorov. Bull gets an edge and gets back going, but in is Buffalo State shooting on over the net. Went off a of shell and over the net. Good stop by Shell. Look, was hoping he would get that one in the glove, but fortunately for him, but also fortunately it pops out of the glove, but it does go over the net instead of into the net. 
Yeah, I mean, he was hoping to get a bit more on that one. Really hoping to just stop that one, like you said. But he got enough leather on it where it redeflected it away from the path of the netting. So, can't really complain for more than that. Yes, you would have liked to get a stoppage there, but you got the stoppage either way with the icing. So, it's not a huge loss not covering that one up. And one thing I've noticed about Bull that he does weird on the faceoffs is he's a left-handed player, but he takes faceoffs as a right-handed center. That's very interesting, man. You know, some of those guys, you know, swapping the stick around, getting a better edge, might find that they might have a little more, a little more ability to get in there and really chop at the puck with the backhand of their stick. Maybe the puck rifling off the back end of the stick, gets some accurate passes, and Shane Bull there. Big hit shot, chance saved by Shell. Joe, Joe Glamos really wanted that one. He's annoyed, a little frustrated after that one as he shoots it right into the logo of Shell. Shell hangs on to force a faceoff. And a ripper from Smoking Joe right there in the middle. I mean, he's got a hot shot. That thing comes in quick. Good job by Shell moving over, getting in front of that one, squaring it off, blocking it. And like we were going, I want to go back to just that face-off thing. It's blowing my mind that Bull throws it as a right-handed center, even though he's left-handed. I mean, I've played hockey for a really long time, Jared. I played for about 15 years, and I don't think I've ever seen somebody go on the opposite side of their stick for a face-off. Yeah, that's definitely one I haven't seen in my experience covering hockey. But taking a look here at the stat sheet, I'd say it's worked out. He's had six face-offs, and he's won five. So I would say that is pretty successful by most standards, 80%. A lot of things lie, Jared, but stats do not. Here's Tyler Flack looking for a second of the night, a little toe drag release, but it is poke checked away by the Bengals. And here come the Buffalo State Bengals the other way. It's Blango looking for a bingo pass, unable to do so, losing a glove as Barrett. Grimshaw able to find that puck in front of Shell. High danger chance averted, and here comes Flack the other way. Flack flies, sleeve skates in. Flack holds, goes down low for Grimshaw. Grimshaw backhander, nice little saucer. Flack gets it to the net, and Sleet trying to get it. Gets a stick in Norman, and the extracurriculars continue. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been a real high temper game so far. A lot of pushing and shoving in front of the net after that whistle goes. Even within the even within the play, I mean, we've seen Shane Bull throw some really big hits here in this matchup so far. It's a physical game. It's going to get physical. There's huge implications. And when the Lakers are up 3-0 with 17-14 left to go in the second period, Buffalo State's got to find something to slow the Lakers down. They're playing so quick, just light on their feet, flying around this ice, getting good passes. Sometimes the way that you shut that down is by playing a more physical game and try to get in their heads, intimidate them a little bit. Absolutely. And a quick update here for you as we've had a few changes I believe the flat goal has been credited as unassisted under the Carlo goal. Now coming from Robillard and Shane Bull. Gatto had the assist originally. Here's Dickinson crashing the net, going to the backhand, but the Bengals claw him off the puck. Now Jackson Arcan up high with it. Semrad hangs on to it. The Lakers looking to continue steamrolling here. So that puck's dumped down behind the net. Here's Noah Bull. Noah Bull, wraparound chance, shoots off the pad. And Noah Bull lays a monster hit on Chris Blango. Blango blammed into the boards, and now they're tied up in the corner. Another stoppage of play there as the puck is all tied up. Lakers win that one off the board. Smart gets it out to McQuaid. McQuaid dangling in, backhands wide. McQuaid circling in, circles to the slot, wants to take it himself. He shoots and just over the net. Norman pushes across to cover off the corner. Smart shoots into the crease, and McQuaid unable to get a stick on it. What a play by Connor Smart. I thought he was about a Michigan that one, Jared. Centering pass out in front. Here's McQuay. McQuay backhand. Norman able to get it. It goes off the breadbasket. Almost sneaks through the five hole. But Norman windmills that glove and hangs on. And the triangle working great for the Lakers. Two guys down low. One man in front always getting an opportunity. As we see there, I thought he was about a Michigan that you one. Right. He was very close on it, but he just kind of toe drags it around looking for a pass in front. And they ended up getting a shot deflected that goes into the breadbasket of Norman. But oh my. Would that have been beautiful if he executed it? Kalabufa trying to wrap it around. Nothing doing. Bunker gets it and fires it into the corner. Looking to keep it in. Tied up with it now is Cahill. Cahill able to stick that one into the other corner. And the Lakers will get back as Buffalo State will finally break it out. Here's Cozy Rev. Cozy Rev, a man on the mission, gets it over. Shot. Blocked away by Shell. Todorov with the shot into the back of the net it goes. Everybody fighting. Oh, Todorov getting pushed around. He takes Ryan Bunker down. No penalty called. Refs let him play. Kalabufo taking it up the far side, no icing. Kalabufo and Ford tied up. 
Hayden Ford getting down, trying to get a piece of the puck, kicks it out. Here's Shane Bull. Bull down low, raging his way through. That one behind the net, and Buffalo State will recover. That's going to go the length of the ice, and that will be, like on a cupcake, a very easy icing. Yeah, I mean, you can't, can't argue with that one. A good play from Buffalo State. Just get the puck out of your zone. You're getting dominated down there. You can't, you can't get a stoppage. Throw it down the ice. Try to get some new players on the ice. Just get a whistle. Regroup a little bit. Settle down. They were running around in their own zone like chickens with their heads cut off. I mean, all over the place. The Lakers were dominating it as Bull wins another face-off back. Bear fires that one on low, looking to find a stick. He does find a stick, but it is the stick of Buffalo State defenseman Lucas Patton as he carries it in. DiCarlo checks him off the puck. Shane Bull lays a check down low. Cozy Rev down in the corner, getting extended mids, and Cozy Rev gets blown up in the corner by Warmoth. Glamos in the play. He and Barrett exchange shoulder checks as here's Gato. Gatto tried to be shoved along the boards. Todorov skates on. Nolan Barrett whiffs on the one-timer. A good pass, just missed the tape. Centering pass for Bull, nothing doing. And Buffalo State trying to get out desperately as Michael Makash comes up. And Gato with another big hit as the hitting ramps up. And Gato may not be the biggest guy. He's not going to throw you down on the ice, but even that just slight bit of contact that he's been putting in. And here we go, Shane Bull getting into it down there with Jackson Barrett, the extra skater for Buffalo. They exchange cross checks and get tied up, and they go their separate ways. Physical game, physical game in front, and we just were talking about that Gato hit. Like I was saying, he's not the largest guy on the ice. He's not going to throw you down on a hit necessarily, but he's going to he's going to bounce off you enough where he's going to make you lose the puck. And he's been a huge part of the Lakers' success here in this game, playing hard, fast, and physical. Absolutely. Here's Connor Bazal, takes that one out. Pass up to Ryan Leonard. Leonard will dump it in. Shell has puck handled the puck more than he's had to save the puck. Here's Sleet. Sleet slide with it up to Grimshaw. Grimshaw, the Oswego native, spinning, twirling, dancing like a ballerina up along the near side boards. Unable to do anything there, he gets it to Sleet. Addison shoots on low. Norman save with a blocker just over the pads. Had to reach for that one, a good save. Grimshaw still battling down low in the corner. Grimshaw will rickshaw that puck out. Grimshaw with it, backhand into the crease, and Buffalo State with a good clear. Defense was there on the play. Now pinching up is Tyler Van Newton. He waits for reinforcements. Back checks, and Tyler Flack just takes him to the boards. No penalty, no arm, still only one penalty in this game. Grimshaw, saucer pass cross for Dickinson. Dickinson will pinch on up and drops for Sleep as the deep pair changes. Sleep circling, cycling, drops for Smart. Here's Smart. Smart shoots right into the bread basket of Emil Norman. And Emil Norman making a fine loaf of bread over there as the bakery's been busy. A lot of stops right into the, the center of his jersey. Oswego looking to go short side here, Kyle, but since that goal to kick off the second period, unsuccessful. I mean, shots are shots. You put them on enough, you're going to start getting in his head. He's going to get fatigued the more, the more pucks that bounce off of his body. And that was a good play by Smart coming down. He gets it just before the puck slips over the blue the blue line, keeps the play going, and a great drop pass from Sleeth there too. Came down with some speed, good shot opportunity, and it goes into the glove of Norman. Fourth line still out there now. Jackson Arcan, Noah Bull, and Connor Smart. Third deep pair, Ryan Bunk and Troy Robillard. Buffalo say a little woozy coming up the ice, looking for a change on the forecheck is Morin. No icing. Buffalo State has to go back in their zone and they'll skate another 200 feet. Dangling around is Glamos and stood up over there was Morin again. Oswego upping the physicality as well. A lot of the hits coming from the Lakers. Cahill dangles in, toe drag release into the corner. And a few sticks that hit hit Cahill on the way down. He fights through all the slashing calls. Doesn't matter, he's a tank. Shooting on was Warmoth then Norman loose puck, unable to cover it, now he will. Pushing Tommy Cahill off the play is the captain, Parker Allison, but we will not see any more WWE on ice for the moment being. And right now, Kyle Oswego really starting to tee off here. Shell's only seen three shots. Norman has now seen almost 20. Yeah, I mean, Oswego's just ripping them on net right now. They're getting their shots in numbers. They said, yeah, maybe I want one. No, they bought them in bulk. Call it Costco. Cahill shoots on. That one sticked out into the slop, and no one able to get a stick on it. Barrett 
Down to K Calabufo. Now to Cahill. Cahill walks on, centering pass. McQuaid unable to get a stick on it. You know, spring training started today. He was trying to baseball swing his, his stick onto the puck there. And here comes Calabufo. It was going to be McQuaid the other way. Warmoth collects, shoots right through two Buffalo State defenders, and now it's a two-on-one. McQuaid shoots all the way up into the netting. He about to send that puck into Lake Ontario. Yeah, that one went straight to the moon off the blade of a Buffalo State defender. Good job getting their stick out there, redeflecting the shot. Norman shot from the top of the circle that Norman doesn't have to face now. And Buffalo State, I mean, they've let up three goals, yes, and it has, some of it has been defensive flaws. But the Lakers scored very early into this period, and for the last 10, not 10 minutes, about the last eight minutes, they've looked pretty solid on defense for the Bengals. Yeah, they have been picking Norman's five hole. You know, that's something I've never really seen with Emil. Usually Emil gets beat when he gets moving around, but they were able to get him five hole twice so far in this game. And for Buffalo State, they haven't found a way around Shell yet. But granted, they have not had many opportunities to test him. Here might be one coming up. They're starting to cook a little bit, and they will test Shell. Chris Blango bombs that one down, and Cal Shell flashes the leather a little bit. A little Shesterkin play there and makes the save. Yeah, he has to slide over, kind of grab that one, more like a catcher than anything. Little little flash, little flare. You know, curveball in the dirt, doesn't matter, can't get past Shell. He goes over, gloves that one, face off in the far corners. Let's get a word down from the sidelines, down the spectacular. Michael Scheller, that puck's going in the neutral zone. Scheller, what do you got? Okay. Kyle, Jarrett, you gentlemen are doing magnificent tonight, and what an atmosphere here in the Deb. The Lakers are firing on all cylinders. You got Fleck, you got DiCarlo, and Gato just with a third goal of the night. It is an electric atmosphere, and the Lakers are rolling. They're looking to keep it together. Kel Shell doing phenomenal, has had some clutch saves, and it's looking like the Lakers have the momentum right now, as they certainly do. We're going to see how these next two periods wrap up, and the Lakers are trying to finish strong here in the second. Gentlemen, back to you. Thank you very much, Michael. Play resuming Shane Bull at a chance. Centering pass was staked out, and here's Semrad. Semrad with three points last weekend, sends it centering. Nothing doing. No one there to clean it up. Here's Grimshaw. Grimshaw skates his way in with sleep. Grimshaw takes it himself, shoots it off. The chest protector of Norman, and that bounces right off the netting, and we'll get a stop at your play. And Grimshaw, somebody that they got to keep an eye out on. I mean, last week he was the Grim Reaper out here against Buffalo State. Three goals. So... A shot that you have to watch out for. He's he's a player that maybe he's not one of the top guys you're watching on the radar. You're looking out for the Tommy Cahills. You're looking out for the Alex DiCarlos, who night in, night out, are known to have a cannon of a shot. Trent Grimshaw is somebody that slips through that scouting report a little bit. Somebody who is lethal, but he's got to keep an eye on, too. Flack shoots on. Norman we will just pad that one away. A little soft locker save. Robel are back with it. That puck trickles over, and Buffalo save will get a free entry. Sent around the back of the boards. Robillard will have to work for it. Now Bunka. Bunka saucers that one out, and he will get it out, and that may go for icing. It will. So all the way back down the ice they come. The Lakers can't get a change. But Bunka looking to avoid any zone time for Buffalo State. If Oswego can win the faceoff, they may be able to clear out again. And not a horrible play from Bunka there. They were pretty pressured. Not a lot they could do with the puck. The guys were covered. Just get it down the ice, regroup it. Get a little bit of a breather, get back going after the faceoff. Not a bad play, I don't hate it. Third line getting a lot of ice time here and something interesting to know, the starting top line for Oswego, Daniel Calabufa, Tommy Cahill, Matt McQuaid. Only one point amongst them and McQuaid with the assist, stopped by Shell. He kicks that one out, six save. Cozy Rev, paddling along the boards. He hasn't been too cozy in Oswego so far. Two Lakers, no puck as that puck flies over Sleeth there. Now Robillard up with it, looking to pass up, finds a Buffalo stick, but the puck bounces its way to Flack. Now over to Grimshaw. Grimshaw spin cycles his way around, but that puck goes off a skate and is now behind the net. Grimshaw and Flack poking for it, sticking for it. Feels like deja vu. We've been here a few times. Flack and Grimshaw unable to get it out. Grimshaw will get it out, but Buffalo State holds possession. Here come the Bengals up the other way. They'll go back into their own zone and fire it up. No icing, got a stick. Shell out to play it, will paddle it into the corner, and now Oswego on the breakout, fourth line out. Arcan pushed off the puck, but he'll pass it up to Smart. Smart and Noah Bull with a chance. Arcan the trailer. Smart backhands right in the net, and again, another Buffalo State stick sending some pucks to the air. 
And that one wasn't even close, Jared. That one goes right over the top of the net. As an update from Plattsburgh, the Cardinals now lead the Ice Knights 2 to nothing up in North Country. A tale of sign that maybe we see a rematch of Whiteout. Don't want to jinx anything too quick for either team. But that would be one heck of a matchup to see. It would be a great matchup either way. I think this team seeing Genesee or Plattsburgh would be cool. I mean, this is a great matchup too. That one fired on by Warmoth. You know, Buffalo State, a really hard-nosed team. Make it work for everything. The Lakers just a bit quicker today. Saved by Norman. A nice read on the play. Sarkhan fired that one in from an odd angle, and he was able to kick that one out to where it wasn't any Lakers. And all four lines have looked really good here tonight, Jared, for the Lakers. Really all around. Just a good team performance. Every player is playing their role. The fourth line, Smart's looking super quick out there. Can't ask for much more. Here's Smart shooting on, bouncing puck. Norman will cover. And, yeah, I have to agree with you there, Kyle. I mean, I'll be honest with you, above said, I really haven't noticed anybody. Tyler Van Newton's had a very good game, some strong shifts. But he's been kind of pushed off the puck, struggling to protect a little bit. Drayton Todorov's had a couple huge defensive plays to clear the puck out. But the guys we expected to see, Joe Glamos and Nikita Cozy Rev, we really haven't seen a lot of so far. We'll see if they can turn that around here. Quick shot on, Norman save. Bouncing puck, saved by Norman. Good save by Norman as he's able to keep the pads down, keep that five hole shut, and stop a shot from the Lakers. Here's Dickinson. Gets it down to Kala Bupo. That puck gets all the way through traffic, no sticks on it. Slow rolls right to Norman. Here's Calabufo. Below the red line, sends it up. McQuaid has it. Promptly is poke checked off it. Good play by Chris Blango, hounding whoever has the puck. Here's Cahill. Cahill will backhand it in as he almost loses an edge and skates out of the zone. Calabufo in the four check. You can see Buff State changing the way that they're playing within their own zone. They're putting a lot more pressure on the defensemen for the Lakers as they've been using the point quite a bit to get space, regroup, find new pass lanes. By pu pressure in that, Buffalo State's taken away a bit of that time the Lakers have been using so effectively. Yeah, Oswego really likes to move the puck. And that'll be, I believe, an offsides call. Yes, it will. So, Buffalo State and Oswego will have a nice nifty little face-off here. And I think a key thing here is, you know, Buffalo State, their defensive unit, they really like to kind of drop down on the net and kind of collapse to the net and collapse their way in and kind of almost prevent any pucks from getting to Emil Norman, try to lower how many shots he sees because Norman does often see a lot of shots. Typically in these Buffalo State contests, there's another one that he'll softly just stick away out to his defenseman. But getting those defensemen out of the play, that's two less Lakers they have to worry about if they can kind of force them out in the neutral zone to play up high. It's something you also want to keep an eye on, though, if you're Buffalo State. You don't want to be collapsing on the net too much to the point where you're then screaming, screening Norman and making it harder for him to see the pucks coming in. Chip puck in from the blue line, shot on by Hayden Ford. But Cal Shell able to stop that one. No Ford truck month just yet. Cal Shell, another nice glove save. And the Lakers will have a faceoff in their own zone. We'll take a look. Pretty easy. Not really heading towards the pipe a little bit. Um, gets through traffic, but not really anybody to screen there on that play. Could have used a tip. Yeah, chip shot from the point from Ford, but Shell says I'm more of a Chevy guy anyways. Here's to Carlo over to Bull. Rebound chance. Gato unable to get there. Gato, Gato unable to get to that puck. So now it comes out. Robillard will dump it in. Bends off Cozy Rev. Down low now is the other seven on the ice. Gato. Gato tied up. Glamos will get it out to Cozy Rev, and Cozy Rev will work it out. Cozy Rev off to the races. That one sticked on by a Laker. None unable to make a play is Todorov. Todorov turns it over to Carlo. Toe drag shoots and shoots it off the glass. And that's something that Carlo loves. He loves that toe drag release. Gets him a bit more mustard on the back of his shot. Creates a little bit of space. Great move for, and really the signature move of Alex to Carlo. Grimshaw in the four check as the Bengals regroup. It was Barrett over across now. Chipping it in are the Bengals. Here's a rebound chance. Shot over the net. Boy, that's the best chance that the Bengals have had. And Anthony Morin shot it right over Shell after Shell. Maybe a little careless with that rebound. Shell looking to grab that one, but Nolan Barrett says no. Takes him off. Wow. He takes a Buffalo State Bengal into the boards and no penalty there. Refs letting a lot go here, Kyle. Letting them play. No complaints here. Just don't want to see anyone get hurt. Yeah, that was a close play. I think it was just kind of one of those ones, weird angle, weird time. Here's Flack over to Grimshaw down in the corner. Big checks down there. 
coming out to the far side. Skating up with its Leonard. Leonard will keep it and goes with it. And joining him is Jared Figueroa. Figueroa lays a big hit on Semrad. Grimshaw, air puck, will it get the Jumbotron? No, it will get a Buffalo State Bengal. It'll go back to Leonard. Leonard seeing a lot of time on the puck. Arcane into four check. That one sent out, oh, almost a too many men. It will be a too many men. As still on the ice was Jared Figueroa. And stepping on the ice to play it was Connor Bazal. And the Buffalo State Bengals will go on the penalty kill and the Oswego State Lakers on their first power play of the game on a Buffalo State too many men. And just bad timing for the Bengals. Too many players on the ice. Take a look at the replay there. That's the one shell just bounces a little bit too far out in front of him. Needs to control that one a bit better. Like you said, Jerry, that's probably the best chance the Bengals have had all night. And he just chips it high over the net. Puck wasn't settled on the ice, gets a little bit too underneath it, and it just kind of rips right off the blade, more like a projectile than a puck. And there was a lot of space glove side, too. They could have stuck something in short side, but just a little bit too much elevation, which means no celebration. Here's the Carlo over on the far side. The umbrella is working, and now Quinn Warmoth up at the tippy top. Sends it across the sleeve. Back to Warmoth. Warmoth looking to wire one to Carlo. Skates in, gets it down to Calabufo. Backhand spin move, no Patty Kane. Warmoth shoots on through traffic and a great save by Emil Norman as it was tipped by a Buffalo State defender in Calabufo and Norman gets the push across and swallows it up like it's nothing. Not going to lie, I was expecting and kind of hoping for a Quinn Warmoth slap shot right there. He elects to go for the snapper instead. I thought he was just going to put it all into that one, wind up, try to rip one underneath the bar. But nonetheless, a good play. It caught the stick of a player in front of the net trying to get the deflection. Good power play for the Lakers so far, getting a shot or two off. Sleeth in, able to handle that face off. It'll be one for Oswego. Here's the Carlo down low, cycling in. A lot of room, and I mean a lot of room for Warmoth up top. Buffalo State playing right below the net. There's the Warmoth slapper. Gets a Bengal out in front. That was Logar. Sleeth back up to Warmoth, who loses an edge. And here's maybe a chance for Logar. He loses an edge. And that's to the joy crucial. of the student section. That is critical for the Bengals there. Logar cannot lose his, his um, edge right there. Got to keep going through and try to get the breakaway. That puck wrapped around. Sleeth is tied up all the way in. I believe Connor Gato pretty much unnoticed. And now Warmoth in the neutral zone waiting for everybody to cycle, and he'll get some new troops. New battalion in for Warmoth, and he's ready to go to war. He drops it off for, Kala, for not Kyle, but for Cahill. Here's Cahill skating in. The electric company has a wire broken off as that one's cleared out. Shell able to stick that one. Leaves it for Addison. And now Benny Addison on the quarterback. Lakers, Cahill. Lakers got to get ripping here. 19 seconds left to go. Cahill up with it. Spin move. Cycling backhand out of the zone. Buffalo State increasing their intensity. A real aggressive four check. The Lakers just barely onside. Now they'll have to cycle as they get offside. And here's a chance for Buff State. Cahill will kill that one off, though, as the Lakers all cycle their way around. And the man advantage coming to an end. But the Lakers have a rush. Grimshaw drops it for McQuaid. McQuaid cycling it up over. Shot on by Addison. Nothing doing. McQuaid gets a skate on it. Good play. Loses his stick to avoid the hooking call. Buffalo State with a little momentum, a good penalty kill once they got going after that minute 30 stoppage. Smart, turning that puck around. Battling for it is Addison. Addison ties his man up. Here's Rovalar with Cozy Rev. Cozy Rev along the boards. Cozy Rev been beaten and battered today, but still playing hard, and he'll skate back to back check. Here's Smart. Smart with Noah Bull and the trailer of Arcan. Smart out behind the net, looking for the wraparound, and he goes down, tied up with a stick. No call there. Smart looking over to the referee, but nothing doing. Here's Cozy Rebby. Wait, he shoots. Good shot. But I believe that went off a of Bengal there. Big block from Bunka. Got Bunka. Looked like it might have got Jackson Barrett for a second. A little friendly fire. Bunka tomahawks that one, unable to get it out. And that gave the Valley almost another chance at Shell. Robillard around. No Lakers there. Stepping in on that one will be Barrett. Jackson Barrett, not Baxson. Barrett Jackson, the auction company, and here's Jackson Arcan. Jarkey looking to make something happen, but he's pushed to the boards. A good defensive play by Lucas Patton. Patton and Arcan down in the scrum along the boards, down in the photo well there on the near side. Really scrumming for it. Now it's out. Bengals waiting, 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 waiting for everybody to cycle out and get reinforcements. Another long change here, but finally we're back to playing. 
Yeah, Buff State looks exhausted out there right now, Jared. They've been out there for quite a while, and Semrat drops it! Hit. And that's going to be a penalty. That's an easy one there. Going down to the ice is Chris Blango. And that may very well be an interference or more for Semrat, as he might have got a little high there, Spees. Yeah, he definitely hit him high there. A huge hit. He drops a Buff State player there. Open ice collision. I mean... You would think that going into the boards is what hurts the most, but no, a play like that, just Semrad stepping up and lays the shoulder straight into Blango. That's drops him at the red line. Now Semrad's going to be in for possibly an extended period of time. We'll have to wait and see as that shoulder did get up pretty high on Blango. It, it seems like, too, because Ryan Bunka didn't seem too upset down there. The refs are still talking it over. From the replay, it didn't look like Semrad... He definitely got high, but I don't know if he got him in the cage quite. Semrad's also not the tallest guy you have to remember, too. So if, if Semrad did get his shoulder up in the cage of another player, he most likely left his feet on the play there, which I don't think he did, but they're going to be sending him back down the That's tunnel five. to the locker room. Yep. Is it five, or is it just because the fact that it is going to be a five? Yep. They're going to give him a major penalty. We'll see what it is. Most likely head contact is my guess. Yeah, it's probably going to be five in a game for contact to the head, which is warranted on that play. I mean, Semrad looking for the open ice hit, but a little reckless there, just getting up high, a dangerous play. My guess is he probably left his feet on that one. Like I mentioned, he's not the tallest player, so if he w did get his shoulder up high enough on his head to get a game misconduct, he had to have left his feet there, and if you leave your feet, you're getting thrown out yeah. every single time. So to say that combination of the of the penalty of that penalty and the potential charge for leaving his feet, it'll easily get you five. And the Lakers now on an extended penalty kill against the top power play unit in the Suniac. This is where we will see how Cal Shell can handle. But there's only a minute to go here, so you'll have to stay tuned for the third period to see how effectively a double minor plays out. And it's, it's crucial to let everybody at home know, too. Bengals can score as many times as this power play Stepping as in, they Stepping in, here want. come the Bengals. That was Tyler Van Uden on the play. Contact to the head, the official penalty call for Semrad coming down from Oswego Athletics. Chance down low, Buffalo State looking a lot more energetic here, a lot more powered up, as the power play name would imply. A lot of Lakers tied up, a lot of open space. Cozy Rev wide open in the back door. Buffalo State unable to get a pass on, and Robillard's there to clean it up. Oswego a little lucky there as they get another quick clear. 17 seconds to go the period, almost four minutes to go in the extended power play for the Bengals. And they just got to keep keep refreshing the players out there. Oswego can't get exhausted, can't get caught out there with a player down. Penalty kill, you're skating down round a lot more. You're going to get tired. There's a shorthanded chance for Ryan Dickinson as the buzzer sounds. Buzzer sounded there, and boy... Connor Sleeth able to pickpocket Nikita Cozy Rev. Cozy Rev cuts left. Puck stays right there off the tape of Sleeth. And boy, oh boy, if there's a couple more seconds on the clock, I wonder what Ryan Dickinson might have been able to do if he could have caught up to that one. Yeah, I mean Dickinson, he got a bit of a got a bit of a haircut there. Lost the lettuce. You can tell that he doesn't got the flow coming out the back of the bucket anymore. A little bit more aerodynamic gave him the ability to get the speed to down there. And like you said, maybe a second or more. He's able to get a shot off, but not able to do so. And now the Lakers are going to be down for three minutes and 54 seconds to start this third period. They're going to have to do what they've been doing on the penalty kill, especially that penalty kill. They did a really good job just dumping it down the ice. And if you take a look down on the ice in the corner, the Oswego State men's basketball team coming out onto the ice. They are your Suniac men's basketball champions for 2023 earlier today on WTOP 10. Able to secure a win over Brockport. Jeremiah Sparks down there. Cam Chance, Chris Toscano. Key Anderson, Devin Green, the whole crew down there here at the hockey game. Celebrating that one and celebrating another goal here this weekend is Connor Gato and Shetlers down there with him. Michael, take it away. Thank you, boys. We're here with Connor Gato. Gato, you boys were rolling in the first period. You picked up right where you left off with a goal to open the second. Talk me through that. Yeah, you know, we wanted to come out strong like we did in the first. And for my goal, I just came off the bench. Uh, I think Tommy and McQuaid were driving the net and just popped out for him. And I just banged it home. Right when he needed it. First playoff experience here at home, playing for Oswego. What's it mean to you? It means everything. It's, I love how the crowd's into it and everything. 
an awesome atmosphere. It's an amazing experience. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. And what do you guys got to do in the third to lock down this victory and take it home, advance into the championship? I think we just got to keep keep playing how we're playing, just get, get pucks deep and keep it simple. It's working for us, so just got to keep doing that. Without a doubt. Thank you very much. You, we're throwing it to the perch. Up to Bradley, Tommy T, and Luke Rosenthal. Yeah. Thank you very much, Michael. Not to the perch, but to the box. We are perched over the rink, so fair enough. But that's Close all. Enough. That's all from that's all for me and Speezy here in this second period. We got a little bit of a 15-minute intermission for a little ice flood. We're gonna take a quick break, and then when we come back, we will go to the perch. Jacob Bradley, Luke Rosenthal, and Tommy T over there to break down some hockey for you. Hockey right here on WTOP 10. Oswego leads three to nothing. Welcome back to Major Discussion. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cooked my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hey there, I'm Al Roger, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching <laughs> WTOP. Hey guys, it's me, Isabella Gomez, filling in for Smokey Bear because he's got more to say than just... Only you can prevent wildfires. Like, if you're outside enjoying a barbecue, don't let a hamburger distract you from fire safety. Make sure you aren't dumping your hot coals or ashes onto the ground because that could start a wildfire. So take wildfire prevention seriously and let's save the world one day at a time. Juntos con Smokey Bear, podemos hacerlo. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move, so I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. After 40 minutes of play, the Oswego State Lakers currently lead the Buffalo State Bengals 
three nothing, and we know our sideline reporter Michael Shatler was a little bit too excited to see us back up here on the perch. But gentlemen, for the one time, one, two, three, yeah. yeah. That's one for you, Shallow. Welcome back up to the first. Jacob Bradley, Luke Rosenthal, Tommy Tallarino here speaking into your ears. And gentlemen, the Lakers continue to grow on that lead. The shutout still stands. Luke, opening thoughts, brother. Yeah, much like the first period, the second one, not too much different. The discrepancy between these two teams. The let, don't even mind the shots on goal. Just the shots in general is staggering. If Oswego continues to push it offensively, they're going to be a tough one to beat in the third. Yeah, the offensive pressure has just been really full throttle for the Lakers here tonight. Buffalo just cannot answer, but they end the period on a crucial power play. We'll see what they do with it going into the third. Well, yeah, that, there's a little bit for you guys. Um, Drake Semrat, of course, getting that game is kind at the five-minute major, so he... It's, so this, how this works, if, I, if we understand correctly, oh, yeah. five minutes from that contact to the head, currently set, we have three minutes, 54 seconds remaining in that power play. No matter what, it's not a traditional power play, fellas. If Buffalo State scores, it's not even strength. It's still 5v4. So Buffalo State could really pile in. We saw the Lakers score back-to-back -back in 10 seconds. Buffalo State can make this a much closer game with the man advantage for the next four minutes of play. Yeah, it's the perfect opportunity for them. This is a team that really hasn't had Oswego's number as of late, and you want to look for a way to get back into it. This is the perfect way for to, to get back into it, Tommy. Yeah, I think you said it best. It's the perfect opportunity for them. The alternate opportunists, you might <laughs> say, for the Bengals. Eh. But yeah, they really just have to try and find the back of the net at least once. I mean, they got over three minutes to do so. Just look for one. Don't try to look for multiple. Just try to get on the board at first. Yeah, it's been a really Oswego heavy period and Oswego heavy game. They've been controlling a lot of the pucks. Not too many times has Buffalo State gotten an opportunity. This could be that time to get in their comfort zone, kind of run a few plays, keep the puck in their end. But we're going to take a look right now at the Oswego lone goal from that period. It's by the man you just heard from a couple minutes ago, Mr. Connor Gatto. And gentlemen, a great goal for the freshman. And like, like he said, got to feel good being out there. Yeah, the true freshman getting his first goal in postseason play. You look at that little move and right by, right off the rebounds, right by Emil Norman. And Emil Norman having sort of a rough outing through the first 40 minutes of this one. But to put it up 3-0, it's not the dagger yet. But there's still 20 more minutes to play. But it's getting close, Tommy. There is. I mean, he went five-hole right there on Norman. They couldn't have drawn it up better. Great shot off rebound. I mean, look at the shots on goal right there, 25 to eight. Lakers the past three or four games, maybe even more, have bring that offensive pressure and they're bringing it into the playoffs here tonight. Yeah. Yeah. And right there you see the one thing that, you know, you might at, at home see the shots on goal and say, wow, that's a big discrepancy. But for me, it's those face-offs because when we talked last period, it was only 13 to 10 in favor of the Lakers. Right now, 32 to 13. So right off the bat, the Lakers are controlling the puck and that instantly loop is going to just take it, take the wind right out of the sails of the Bengals. Yeah, they've been one of the best face-off teams in the SUNYAC this entire season, so it comes to really no surprise that they're doing it once again here tonight against a team that they've had really good wins over this season, Tommy. Yeah, we've seen the Lakers unit ever since coming back from the break. They are amazing in face-off wins. They do it in their own offensive side of the ice. That's what you got to ask them to do. Yeah, they are. The Lakers have played really well through the first 40 minutes of play. And if they continue that for the next 20 minutes, the Lakers could be looking at hosting a SUNYAC championship for the Woo! first time since 2017. Of course, the, that Woo! will give you a little update in a little bit about what's going on up north. But for now, the Lakers, I mean, are we getting the champagne ready, fellas? Oh, I don't know about that. There's a, <laughs> wow, there's, a lot there's of a PG. There PG. It, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep it PG. Grape juice, grape juice. <laughs> there you see the period summer right there on your screen from the North Country. Uh, Plattsburgh currently leading the Ice Knights 2-1, to one, of course. A game that certainly they're going to be – It looks a lot more closer – then I think the game we've got going on as far as those statistics with the shots on goals and the faceoffs. Yeah, these are two teams that have given the Lakers problems throughout the season. Both of them having a win over those Lakers. And just look how close it is. Way closer than this game, like you said, Jake. 47 shots, 48 shots. This is the number two and number three seeds. These two teams have come up evenly matched, evenly stacked, and it's looking like it through two periods there in the uh, up north. Yeah, I mean, these two teams are probably top four in the SUNYAC for most of the year. And I think they're showing why they are where they are here tonight. I mean, I'm sure it's a very physical defensive game. You know, they are getting a lot of shots on net, but I'm sure they are going back and forth almost every possession down there or up there in Plattsburgh. I'm going to ask you guys a hypothetical question about 
that game and what's going on right now. The Lakers currently have that 3-0 lead. I don't want to jump the shark and say that it might be over. But right now, if you're the Lakers or Buffalo State, which of those two teams are you hoping pulls away with that victory? Which of the two teams would you rather play? Honestly, I think you got to ask for Plattsburgh, right? Because Geneseo, historically, maybe not so much this season because Oswego did get that win in the IRS Wilson just earlier this season, but I feel like they have a better chance against Plattsburgh. They obviously beat Plattsburgh in the, earlier in the season. That didn't count as a Suniac win yeah. because it was in a tournament, which is, I don't know how to feel about that one, Tommy, but I think you got to pick Plattsburgh. Mr. Rosen, though, I'm glad you brought that up because <laughs> you just stole my point right from me, but it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> But, yes, I mean, Geneseo, they've kind of had their number for years right now in the playoffs. Well, everyone forgets, Oswego is 2-1 and one against Plattsburgh right now. I get that Oswego kind of got blown out in the third game against Plattsburgh, but all in all, they beat them twice. That's got to count for something. Yeah, I know the Lakers. That's been the thing about the Suniac, especially over the last couple of weeks. Everybody has beaten everybody. Yeah. There's not been one single team that's come into the Suniac and run through like we've seen in the past. This has been very competitive. You saw Geneseo beat us here on our home turf. We saw Oswego beat Geneseo on their home turf. Plattsburgh came in here and gave Oswego a very competitive game. Both teams are very um, close together, of course. And we look at um, the potential Suniac championship. The one thing I want to throw at you guys with that home ice advantage for the Lakers has got to be the, um, let's just throw it to Shetler. Shetler is down there on the sideline. Here he is. Let's hear from him. Michael Thank you, gents. We are here with the Suniac men's basketball champions, Jeremiah, Cartier, and Devin, and Jason from Juan Zones, of course, making a cameo. Gents, how does it feel to be Suniac champs once again? Uh, it's, it's a great feeling cutting down the nuts. I mean, having it at our home place, it was a lot easier to play, and having our home crowd with us, it made it way more special, so. Absolutely. Uh, amazing, being my first year here, being able to win a Suniac just feels great. Back to back, it feels good, bring it back to Back to back, just like Drake, and as Sweet Caroline starts, and everybody starts swaying, Sweet Caroline's about to get a whole lot sweeter as the Lakers look to take that championship. Hopefully we got two winning teams. Gentlemen on the perch, back to you as I'm gonna jam out with the Suniac men's basketball champions. Yeah! Yes, sir. All right, gentlemen. Good stuff from Michael Shetler. Oh, as always. Cool. Yeah. Guys, always. Sweet Caroline's blasting in our ears right now. And I'll ask you guys the final question going into this third period. What are you guys looking for? What is, what's Buffalo State got to do to get back in this one? They got to get one past Cal Shell. Cal Shell, only eight saves in this one. And that's a lot of credit to this defense of, of that he's having, with especially Jake Semrad, who's now in the penalty box. But you got to get one past him. You know what? I'm willing to say, I think Cal Shell is the best goalie in the Suniac right Whoa. now. He's playing like it. He's playing oh. like it. He's playing like it. Wow. Those are some bold claims there. I needed to say. It needed you to be said. heated up the stove right here <laughs> in the duck. But, I mean, for Buffalo, they got to get the playmakers involved. Absolutely. They got to get them involved on offense. They got to do a little dirty dangles. I mean, do whatever you can to get a goal. 100%. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we got 21 minutes of hockey coming to you back up there with Kyle Spizak and Jared Wakefield. Make sure to stay tuned right here at WTOP Time. Hey guys, it's me, Isabella Gomez, filling in for Smokey Bear because he's got more to say than just... Only you can prevent wildfires. Like, if you're outside enjoying a barbecue, don't let a hamburger distract you from fire safety. Make sure you aren't dumping your hot coals or ashes onto the ground because that could start a wildfire. So take wildfire prevention seriously and let's save the world one day at a time. Juntos con Smokey Bear, podemos hacerlo. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention.
Welcome back to the Deborah F. Stanley Ice Arena and Convocation Hall. 20 more minutes of regulation hockey left between the Oswego State Lakers and the Buffalo State Bengals. I'm Jared Wakefield, and I'm joined by Kyle Spizek. And Kyle, it's been a wild SUNYX semifinal here so far. The Lakers up 3-0. They've thoroughly dominated this one, but the Lakers on the shorthand right now as they're fighting off a Drake Semrad major penalty and game misconduct. And Spizak, this is far from over. Buffalo State looking to capitalize here with 3.54 on the major. Yeah, I mean, 20 minutes still have to go here in the game. You can never count a team out. I mean, we saw a few weeks ago the Lakers were down 3 0 entering in the third period of the Geneseo game, and they were able to rip three home in about seven minutes. So you never want to count a team out. One thing I noticed, though, right before, right before the puck drop, Liam Gross was starting to get loose for the Buffalo State Bengals. Interesting enough. I wonder if he might see some time. Here's Matt McQuaid. McQuaid skates in all by himself. Save made by Norman. Goes behind the net. Thought he wrapped that one up, but unable to corral it. Behind the net again. The Bengals will pickpocket. Almost a shorthanded goal for McQuaid, but nothing doing there. And here's Cozy Rev. Cozy Rev looking to rev up the Bengals as they enter the zone. Here's Cozy Rev. Shell with the save. Rebound chance off behind the net. Here's Kalapupo taking it out. Heavily pressured by the Bengals as they get drawn behind the play. Soft chip in so the Lakers can get a fresh unit on. And we're nearing the halfway point. Two minutes down, three minutes to go here on the major penalty. And I think what Oswego needs to avoid doing here, Kyle, is taking another one. Had a few moments where they were getting a little antsy. There's one there. Bowling Glamos getting into it nice and early. And Buffalo State trying to keep that puck in the zone. Glamos trying to get a pass on. Shell will just cover that one up and stop the chaos. And a good play by Shell to prevent any potential turnover there as Oswego tried to clear it out. And a good defensive play from Shane Bull hitting the deck, not allowing the pass lane to be open. Gets the puck on his on the blade of his skate. That one deflects back to Shell. Shell's able to close it off, get a stoppage of play. Hopefully the Lakers are able to win it back, tump it down the ice here. I mean, you want to keep it to 45-second shifts here if you're the Lakers. You got 20 minutes left to go. Don't want to don't want to run out all the gas in the tank. 45 seconds on and off. Skating on up high is Chris Blango. He shoots on and a save by Shell. Blango, the player that got lit up by Semrad, and we're practically at the halfway point here. 2:35 left in the penalty. It's Jackson Arcan serving the penalty for the Lakers off the fourth line. Arcan's been pretty good on the special teams, but Arcan not one of the quickest players on the Lakers, although he has three power play goals this year. Special teams monster, but the Lakers like to send him to the box. Now halfway, two minutes 30 to go, and it's cleared out, goes into the bench. Buffalo State looking to get the whistle there that it did tip, tap somebody on the bench. So we will go back down and get another faceoff. And I mean, not the play you're looking for the Lakers. You're hoping that one goes all the way down the length of the ice as Bunka's saying that it hits something. Bunka's He's... saying it hits something else. But it's not going to change the ref's mind either way. We're going to have the face off here near side. Not it's... quite yet. Ref's down here. Zerensky and Sylvester. Zerensky, the linesman, and Sylvester, the referee, coming down. I wonder if we're going to see a delay, maybe a delay of game here for getting up in the bench or potentially getting a stick. Stick there. At least it seems like they're talking about it. No, we will not. She'll shake it ahead from the referee. Linesman said they didn't see anything that looked a foul of the rules, so we'll play on. Still five on four. Buffalo State with about two minutes 20, a man advantage to cook with. The most potent power play in the SUNYAC so far this year. Unsuccessful so far, but they've certainly had their chances, but they're far from done. Top skaters out there right now as well. Connor Bizal is out there. Andrew Logar. Shell behind the net, able trying to bat that one away. Unable to do so. Shell looking for something out in front, unable to do, do so, and the Lakers clear it with a bit of force, and they'll grab a wholesale change. That's a huge clear for um, Bunka there, allowing the Lakers to get a new new set of power penalty kill on the ice there. They were starting to get really gassed. They were out there quite a bit, so crucial play to be able to get that down the length of the Interesting ice. Interesting to see no Nikita Kozy rev on this power play right now, Kyle. We saw him a bit at the start, but he's been on the bench since then. He's had five power play goals this year. They get it up high and up to the top of the point for Blango. Blango unable to let one go, and Letting that puck go is warm up as it goes all the way down the ice again. A minute 25 to go, less than a minor. Skating in on with it now are the Bengals. Drop pass for Cozy Rev, sends it across for Glamos. A little bit too much cheddar for the Bengals. 
And Clamos can't get his claws on, and now a shorthanded break. McQuaid and Calabufo. McQuaid waiting, waiting, waiting. Finds a lane, shoots. Good blocker saved by Norman, a good read. Buffalo State coming the other way. Minutes ago in the power play. Ryan Dickinson is going to get a penalty there. Oh, boy. Shell able to make the stop. He hauls down a Buffalo State Bengal. And, boy, it looks like Ryan Dickinson is going to the box, and we are going to have at least a minute here of five on three and then a minute of five on four. And that was a bit of an interesting call. They give him a hold. Okay, no, I hold. see it now. I was going to say that was a hold, Kyle. First things first. First things I couldn't see it. I thought couldn't really see Dickinson reaching his arm out. But right there on the replay, it's obvious. He reaches his arm out, grabs Glamos, and tosses him straight down to the ice. Yeah. That's, that's going to get called every single time. Got to look at the clock there. 59 seconds to go. If the goal goes there, there's not a good chance Buffalo State can even get two there, let alone three. And now they'll get an extra minute on the stove with the power play. Cozy Rev back across, whole lot of do -si do and Shell will cover it up with the blocker. Went down with the glove, missed it, so he went with the other hand and was a bit more successful. So Shell starting to get a little busy here, 10 saves. Yeah, I mean, when you're on the power play for five minutes straight. Now six. Yeah, now six. You are going to get a lot of shots coming your way. So, I mean, not a good time for the Lakers to take a penalty there. Bad play from Ryan Dickinson to put them down two, three players on the ice now for, for a minute. So not what you want to see here in the third period. Not a great way to start the third period. Here's Cozy Putting a lot Rev. of pressure on the penalty kill. Centering it. No shot there. Cozy Rev down low. And, boy, you can see why this Buffalo State power play is so deadly. It's hard to tell where they're going to go. And Cozy Rev can't reach for that one, and it's cleared down. That may just about kill most of the major off and only Dickinson's minor to go. Nope, only one penalty on Buffalo State so far for too many men. Cozy Rep drops it off up high, able to find Logar. Logar holding, slowing things down, taking his sweet time. Tap pass back to Logar. One timer, Cozy Rep, what a save, Shell. Shell sticks the blocker out and kicks it into the corner and another clear. That'll kill the major. Jackson Arcan. Off the bench and onto the ice, Ben Addison, five on four for a minute to go, and the Lakers successfully kill the major in game as we get an icing. And that's something the Lakers have been looking to do all season long. The penalty kill was not a highlight of this season at all whatsoever. But in this game, they've been able to kill off everything they've seen so far. I mean, five-minute major right there. They kill off the entire thing. Just good, sound defense. They're not leaving the box. They're staying right in that area, not allowing anything to get inside, just keeping shots forced to the outside. And taking away passing lanes. You can't ask for a better penalty kill than that. Lakers looking to try to keep it in the zone, but they will fall back pretty quickly. Talabufo, the only one in the zone trying to make something happen. Huge hit, the linesman's down. Shane Bull and getting caught up in that as well was Anthony Moore, and the linesman's back up. Glad to see he's all right, but boy, that's a wake-up call as Norman will stop that one 30 seconds ago right in front of the Buffalo State penalty box. Goodness. And that's something you like to see out of the Lakers. They're not scared, even though they have taken penalties, to remain physical. But you got to reel it in, too. You can't get too physical. You don't want to take penalties, but you can't slack off and let them start taking control of the game either. Another big clear by the Lakers, and that may do it. 15 seconds to go, and the Bengals trying to regroup. They may try a fast break here to see if they can make something happen, and they will. Skating up with it is... LaValle, Aiden LaValle, drops that one off. A whole lot of pucks going around, and the Lakers kill off. Six minutes of back-to-back -back penalties. Dickinson on the chase looking for the breakaway, but it'll head to the bench. Almost an offensive opportunity there for the Lakers. And that's a huge six minutes of play for the Lakers, being able to kill off everything. They're obviously going to be a bit drained now, running with a player less for the last six minutes, but now you got to keep it going. You're back to even strength. Get back to your normal style of play. Start playing hard and fast. Nolan Barrett who struggled with turnovers in the first 40, forces a turnover on Buffalo State there, picking the pocket of Parker Allison. Behind the net now to Carlo Cahill, wraparound chance. Oh, he's pushed off the puck. Getting up high, shot on, saved by Norman. Another shot, Warmouth blocker saved Norman. Boy, there's salt and pepper in Norman like he's a steak and Longhorn. Turning that puck around, Noah Bull in on it, comes out of the zone, Buffalo State with momentum. They enter the zone, way out in the slot there, looking for a pass was Penry, but he'll cut back around. Big hit late, Noah Bull goes down. Warmoth dangles, four to Carlo. To Carlo now slowing the pace, back to Warmoth. Warmoth with Noah Bull. Warmoth will just fire that one in and grab a change. Bunka and Robillard on for the deep pair. Rest of the fourth line comes on. Noah Bull lays a hit but spins off it a little bit. Arcan takes it, Arcan with a pickpocket. Here's Smart, Smart looking to throw on. He gets pickpocketed in return. A whole lot of puck theft here. 
Robillard skates his way back. Not how he wanted to pass that one to Bunka, but the stick poke check there by Frazzi makes it happen. Buffalo State back on it, no icing. They will play it. Lucas Patton battling down low with Sleeth. Sleeth had a chance to center that puck out. Smart was there looking for it. Here are the Bengals with another break again. Glamos. They get it to Cozy Red. Cozy Red dangles. He shoots just wide. Oh, nice moves by Nikita Cozy Red. Won't go in the net, though. Doesn't even get the shell. Sleeth sticks that one ahead. Leonard with the check. Back on it now is LaValle. Bunka with it. Taking it for Oswego. Fourth line off, third line now on. Flack, Grimshaw, Sleeth. Addison on, Bunker will look for a change here. We'll see Ryan Dickinson for a minute, and Addison checked hard into the boards. No call there, he'll get up and continue to play. And a lot more urgency out of the Bengals here in the third period so far, Jared. Here comes Flack with Grimshaw. Flack shoots to Grimshaw and shoots it just wide of the net off the backboard. Here's Flack, out in front, Addison throws on. Blocker save, almost gets the ref in the head. Hey, Logan Morning, how are you? Here's the Bengals' near side. Chris Blango throws that puck in the air. They'll go down to Addison. Addison, board pass. Uh-oh, going towards Shell. Shell, a nice play with the stick. Not allowing any space there for the Bengals' Connor Bazal to make a play. Smart play by Shell to just get that one back in the corner. Flack on it now. Dickinson as well. Oh, Dickinson, almost another hold there. No call. Tied up out in front was Todorov and Addison after that play. Here's Flack. Glass pass. Straight back to the Bengals. Addison will turn it. Nobody there. Pinching in way hard there was Andrew Logar. Back into the corner. Not a lot of center ice chances here for the Bengals, Kyle. They're going to score here in the third period. Big and hit. A bucket comes off. Ryan Dickinson's bucket is knocked off, and here we go. And that's going to send somebody to the box. Goodness gracious. And Dickinson just took a good four or five jabs from a, from a Buffalo State player there. And he's having words with the bench and laughing as he comes to the bench. And they are going to send Drayton Todorov, whose frustration was becoming very visible. He got into it with Dickinson first, then Addison, then again in the corner, and they get into it. And a good job by Dickinson keeping his composure there as we take a look. Dickinson goes, he gets shoved once, he gets shoved twice, and, Co and he just gets his head popped and right I, there. I, Todorov and the, throwing and the high shots. section is livid, as that's only going to be a two. The bucket comes off, and you could see there, Todorov ends up getting Dickinson up high with the butt end of his stick. No major call, but we will play on. I'm surprised not to see a, either a fighting call or head contact surprised there. Surprised not to see a two and a game there. That's what I thought made sense, but he will stay in the box for two. Pretty late in the game here. Checked off at his sleeve. Warmoth could play to stay in, cycling back to back up sleep there. Here's Calabupo down low. Gato centers it up for DiCarlo, just over the stick. Boy, that was wide open. Here's DiCarlo, sending it across for Sleep. Sleep holds and waits up to the top for Warmoth. Warmoth waits to the near side circle. Shoots on, good save by Norman as he's pushed back into his net. Sleep down low, shooting on. Short side was Gato. Nothing doing, and the Bengals looking for a break, but they'll elect a dump, and they'll get a wholesale change as Michael McCosh fires it in, and Shell will puck handle behind his own net. And a good couple of shots there for the Lakers. Gato coming out of the corner there, trying to snipe it top left corner. Just catches the shoulder of, um, of Norman down there, but a good effort nonetheless. Here's Sleet. He'll get it over to Warmoth. Warmoth the only D-man on this unit right now. To Carlo. Sends it across for Gato a little bit too hard, and it'll be off sides. A little bit of a late offsides whistle, but Lakers will grab a change, face off out of the zone. And 53 here's seconds left to go on the power play. The Lakers, this power play hasn't been as great as the other ones we saw in this game. Well, the other one we saw in this game is the Bengals have only taken two penalties, but they've gotten a few shots off. Just got to get back to the simples. Maintain possession down in the zone, set up your system, and move the puck around. Here's KL. Drops it off for Addison. Addison through traffic just wide, got through, but the tip sends it wide to the net. Here's Grimshaw. Grimshaw up high. To Shane Bull, one-timer. What a save, Emil Norman. Another nice read as Bull gets all of that puck, and Norman puts the glove out, and another day at the job for Emil as he snags it. Yeah, he slides across the crease there, gets a glove on that shot. A fantastic opportunity for Shane Bull right there, just camping out at the top of the circle. Gets the one-timer opportunity, doesn't hesitate, hits it on right away as we take a look at the replay there. Just a 
ripper right away. Lasers it. Gets the glove of Norman. Probably was going to go a bit wide anyways, but still a good save from Emil Norman there and a better shot from Shane Ball. Addison drops it off for Cahill. Here's Cahill. Cycling in. Gets it down low to Grimshaw. Loose puck. Cleared out. McQuaid unable to get a stick on. It was in a bit of a weird spot. He looks a little confused in his own zone. Lakers trying to hustle along. 15 seconds to go. Here's Addison. Up for KL. KL beats the defender, gets around, takes it to the net. Shane Bull, what a play. Bull hard into the boards after the play, blowing a tire. And that was a great A opportunity for the Lakers as Shane Ball unable to bury it. A good read by Norman, a great read to get across and push across, make that save. And a smart play from Here's Shane Here's Glamos Ball. dangling in front. Shell with a stop off the pads. The rebound unable to be buried. Leonard fires that one off the cage of Arcan. Shell right out in front. What a save, Shell. Firing right off there, and we got it. Here we go again. And Todorov right out of the box. He does not care that he just had a two-minute penalty. He's shoving in front of the net again already. He's got to be careful with that. The refs are going to remember that they just went to the box as we take a look at this replay here. What a save by Shell coming out, challenging it, getting it in right into the chest, limiting the angles that they can get for a shot there. But, oh, my God, Cal Shell coming up huge. It's been getting wild out on the ice, but it's also been getting wild off the ice as our own wild man, Michael Shetler's out in the field. Michael, what do you got? Thank you, gentlemen. We're here at the Condiment Station. I got a lovely thing of ketchup with me, and we are here with Carter, who is a member of Oswego's very own comedy club. Would you like to talk to us about a little bit of what, what goes down in Oswego's own? Oswego's own improv is an improv group where we perform every Saturday. Free shows, come on down, it's so nice. In the MCC Auditorium, we have, we have practices every Sunday at six o'clock, somewhere in Murano. We like to have fun, come on down. It'll be so much fun to have you. You heard it here first. Carter, I got one for you. Why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know. Why did the chicken cross? I don't know. The world will never know. But back to you, boys. Join us, Swiggle's very own, or else. Thank you very much, Michael. My good co-host of the interview show, Charlie Arkins. Catch that on Monday nights, the 1030, and every other week here on WTOP. Kicking it with Kyle on the same night. You can catch that every other week when the interview show is not on, on WTOP. And a penalty there for Buffalo State going on to Ryan Leonard. Pretty easy trip call, and I think the way to sum that one up for Buffalo Kyle, Emil Norman sitting in that blocker right over his cage, looking a little upset that he's going to have a little more work to do, and it's not going to be easy here as the Lakers get another chance on the power play. Offsides there, so that puck will get sent out easily by Buffalo, and Cal Shell back to his puck handle. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be frustrating for Norman. Your team goes up on the power play for six minutes at the end of the second and the beginning of the third, and they're not able to get anything in the back of Cal Shell. But then right after that, your team goes out and takes two penalties. A really bad roughing call from um, Todorov down, popping off the helmet of Ryan Dickinson. And then a trip right after that, down back down in your own zone again. That's putting a lot of pressure on Norman. And he's had to stand on his head already here tonight. 41 shots he's seen, and he's only let in three so far. So putting him up on the power penalty kill again, he's going to face a lot. And something I want to note, Kyle, both freshmen. Both freshmen. Both, both defen fr freshman defensemen. Todorov getting into a gato a little bit there. Taking a couple hacks at him after the play. Jackson Arkham with the glove save on the bench, saving Bob Chattel there. Assistant coach for the Lakers. I definitely think Bob Chattel joining the team. He's had a huge impact on their play this year. Chattel with Salt City prospects. They train a whole lot of players, have a whole lot of D1 prospects. They're the primary junior hockey training camp out of Central New York, out of Syracuse. A few players committing to go D1, a lot of players up in the Nall, and a couple in the USHL as well. So they are the premier development program here in Central New York at Chattel, part of the Oswego State program this year. Been doing a lot of skill skates with the team, and it's shown this year. It's with the production up and down the lines. Here's Shane Bull with it now. The Lakers have been cycling for the past few minutes. Addison throws on and gets that one goes away. Going down on the play is Cahill. Todorov with the cross check. Nothing doing. The Bengals will take it out in the student section. Gets more irate. They take Trent Grimshaw off the play. Here's McQuaid by himself. Shot on by Cahill, but sticked away. A good stick. Starting to get real aggressive here, Kyle. Here's Matt McQuaid. Shot. Souvenir. Heads up. And that Over one will go up to the concourse. Yeah, the Blue Line Club just... Got a, got a new souvenir to put up in their collection. 
And boy, Kyle, you can sense the urgency and the frustration. 7.26 to go, 18 seconds on Oswego's power play. Had some good looks, unable to convert, but Buffalo State, you can feel the fury and the Bengals really trying to pounce here. Yeah, all they can see is red. They are getting angrier by the second, and I don't blame them being down at this point in the game. Emotions are going to get very high. This this remainder of your season really depends on the outcome of this game, and there's no way to sugarcoat that. You're down 3 nothing with 7-12 left to go in the game. Stop by Norman. Kind of smart out front with the tip, but unable to do anything as Norman will swallow that one up. And you got, you got to be frustrated if you're Norman, too. You're playing an outstanding game here today. You haven't had much help on the defensive end. You've been facing a lot of shots, as we see another example there. A shot that just goes straight to Norman, doesn't hit a body of a bangle before or anything. Your offense hasn't been getting it going. Buffalo. It's got to be frustrating for him. So Buffalo kills off the penalty. But Oswego still in the zone as Smart goes down. Smart avoids the trip there, and here comes Buffalo State the other way. Cozy Rep dangling his way in, dangling with Fury, and decides to regroup here as they'll pull the goaltender at seven minutes. Goodness gracious, an empty house nice and early. Buffalo State really looking to make something happen, and that's going to be whistled. Might be too many men are off sides. Not quite sure what's going on here. Might have been a mistake. Didn't see the goalie get pulled. Didn't So they didn't understand the sixth man on the ice there. But like you said, yeah. Jared, seven minutes left to go, and you're already going to try to pull Norman that early? That is a bold move. That is a I, bold move. I respect move. it, though. I understand it because they have struggled so poorly to get shots all day today. And you can see Emil Norman is taking the face off from between the dots. And that is nowhere near a goalie crease. No, it is not. Norman C cutting his way back into the net as the Lakers come the other way as soon as Buffalo enters here. I got to imagine he's going to be doing the 400 meter sprint back home. Here's Noah Bull shooting on and that beat Norman. Norman unable to get the pad out, but the puck also slid wide and Norman will glove that one down and head coach Steve Murphy a little annoyed on the bench right now as he wants to get that goaltender out, but those dastardly Lakers just entered the zone again. Yeah, and I mean, it's a real controversial call whether to pull Norman this early or not. I mean, like you said, Jared, I respect it because they need to get something going here in this game. They haven't gotten really anything going. They've got a few shots on Shell, but none of them have been too crazy. So you do want to get it going and get those opportunities. But at the same time, when Buffalo State has been on the power play, the Lakers have still been controlling the puck and forcing the play down in Buffalo State's zone. So do you really want to take that risk this early? Here goes Norman. There he goes to the bench. And it's a man advantage now for Buffalo State with the empty net. Cahill checks in on the boards, bouncing puck out in front of the net for a brief moment, but back behind. Nolan Barrett, good tie up of the body. Get that one out, and it almost comes out, but a good play there by Parker Allison. That puck down low, oh, and a Bengal going down hard. Nolan Barrett standing by, and that puck rolling towards the empty net. And like a roller coaster, the crowd goes up and down as that will go for icing. A lot of hymns and haws you heard out of the Lakers. The Laker faithful right there. Like you said, roller coaster almost. Oh, is it going to go in? Oh, just a bit wide. But the Lakers, if they can get possession of the puck, get it past the red line, once they get to center ice, they have a very high percentage of being able to snipe it on that. So if you're the Lakers, you don't want to dump it straight out of the zone. You want to try to get a little bit of possession skated Face out. Face off coming out in front of the net. Shell looking to make a play there, and Calabupo is going to break it free. Towards the empty net, it rolls. Calabupo will grab a change. McQuaid on the forecheck. Oh, he gets a stick on it. Buffalo State taking it in front of the net, and it'll be Cozy Rev to regroup the troops as Oswego gets fresh units. Buffalo State enters the zone, and that might be a chance for Oswego to capitalize. Here's Warmoth. Warmoth around the glass and over the glass and towards the Buffalo State fandom. They're down on the far side. And it'll be another faceoff in front of Cal Shell, the Oswego netminder. Shut out last weekend against Fredonia, and so far, 15 saves. Yeah, Shells look solid in that. He hasn't, like we mentioned a few minutes ago, he hasn't faced the most crazy shots, but he's had a few that he's had to come out and stamp, step up big. Whether it was a defensive miscue and they got a good look on Shell coming down at a weird angle, gets his shoulder on the puck, or having to kick the skate out. He's had some real good stops. Here's, here is Allison from the point. That one down low behind the net. Bengal going down, no trip. That one shot on through traffic, but wide. You know, something interesting to note here is that Shell's no stranger to the playoffs, as we talked about. I talked about in the pregame. 
18 and 19 playoff games with the Flim Flam Bombers in Saskatchewan last year. Had better stats than the regular season, a 930 save percentage. Was able to take the Flim Flam Bombers all the way to the Centennial Cup against the Pickering Panthers of, I believe, the Ontario Junior Hockey League. And Grimshaw going to feed that one up to Flack. Flack looking for two, looking to put it in the empty net. On with the forecheck. Sleet down there as well. And Flack, oh boy, he really wants to put that puck away and put this game away. 4.30 to go. Still a lot of time left. Definitely not over for Buffalo State, but they got to get the claws out now and go from kittens to cats. Bunka behind the net. Sends that one across for Ball. Robillard off the boards. Gets it to Bunka. Bunka spins around, and Buffalo State looking to make something happen here. They might have something. Here's Ryan Leonard. Ryan Leonard will throw it low, ignoring Jackson Barrett at the point. Looking to find Cozy, Rob unable to do so, and he won't be able to get a stick on as it's back out again. Lakers finding the empty net a bit elusive right now. Yeah, they're not able to get the puck down in Buffalo State zone and maintain it, but they're doing a good job running out the clock nonetheless. Even if you're not getting that Barry home goal, the number four, if you can maintain possession of the puck and just keep the play away from your Cal Shell in your own zone, that's a solid game plan. Here might be a chance for Obelar. I mean, he's looking at the net, was for a moment. Chipped in to Carlo. The Carlo fires low. Cato almost able to get it, but a good play by Ryan Leonard to stick it away in place of Emil Norman there. Quick reaction keeps the puck out of the back of the net there for the Bengals. Cozy Rev skating in. He's been given a little space. Barrett could poke check to force Nikita into the corner. Now up high. Barrett fires on, score! And the Bengals get their first of the game. A slap shot from the corner, and it comes from the captain, Parker Allison. And just like that, the shutout is broken, and with three minutes to go, it's no longer a three-goal lead. Buffalo State won, but the Lakers still lead by three. Norman back in net for the faceoff. I mean, that was a solid play there, and I guess it did work out. We, I had my thoughts about pulling Norman that early on in the game, and a timeout's going to be called on behalf of the Buffalo State Bengals. Really, I was I was a bit skeptical on pulling Norman that early. I thought the Lakers would be able to get the puck down in the zone and get a shot on net and really bury it home for nothing. But I was wrong. Like we said, a good setup there on the quote-unquote power play, man advantage. Just a good backdoor look and a slap shot from the point. That was a ripper. I mean, it went untouched, no deflections in front. It just goes straight top shelf over the shoulder of Shell. You can't ask for a better top uh, shot from Patton up at top there. Yeah, just good placement by Parker Allison there to snipe that one home. And good play by Buffalo State there. It seemed like for a few moments their, their game was going to be over. It looked like an Oswego empty net on a few occasions, but they got back pretty aggressively and were able to make things happen. Ned Gosick looking to rally the troops and tell them, hey, two-goal lead. It's a dangerous lead. There's only three minutes to go. So we'll take a look. A nice pass across. And Shell already down on the pad, just unable to get the blocker up high enough to catch that one. Yeah, that was just a really good stretch pass across. And like you said, Parker Allison wastes no time. He doesn't regroup the puck anything, doesn't try to set it. He hits it straight off the pass. Rips one top shelf, a fantastic shot for the Bengals as puck drops about to go down now as they start it back up. And Norman's looking to come back to the bench again. It just worked out well for him. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. He looked at the bench, hesitated, but that hesitation might hurt him as it's a bit late. And oh, what a play by Parker Allison again. Stopped a surefire empty net goal. It's off sides. But Parker Allison got a stick on that flying puck headed right for the net. Off the stick of Quinn Warmoth. And goodness gracious, that was a game-saving play there in the neutral zone because yeah. that was almost in, and Norman hesitated. Coach Murphy over on the Buffalo State bench hesitated. Norman told him to stick to the bench, and Murphy told him to wait, and as soon as he went, Oswego got possession of the puck, but now it's Buffalo State with possession looking to go the other way. A lot of work to do in 2 minutes 49. Yeah, and that was a Superman play for Parker Allison there, getting the stick up there. I mean, he, he keeps the game in play there. If he doesn't get a stick on there, that Warmoth dump probably finds the back of the net. Absolutely, and you know, Buffalo say you can tell the intensity's there, you know, potential for both teams in the playoffs now. Every game could be your last. Here's Norman to the bench again on the tie-up in the scrum, and I'm sure the Lakers will be content to keep the puck right here, but Warmoth will get it. He'll fire it on, bounces off a of Bengal towards the net. No, just wide. It'll bounce off the backboards. Another roller coaster by the crowd again. McQuaid in the forecheck. Ooh, Buffalo State almost a bit woozy with the puck. Van Uden skating in, drops it off down low. Robillard for the empty net. Good stick by the Bengals. Calabufo off the boards to Cahill. Cahill might do it. Yes, he will. The 
Electric Company seals the deal. Tommy KL for one Oswego. And that's the dagger the Lakers have been looking for for the past five minutes. And you can close the French doors on this one just about. The Lakers got a 4-1 lead here now with 2-0-1 left to play. Cahill right there snipes it from the blue line. He just got to toss it down on net, finds the twine. And the Lakers have a pretty sound lead now. A good look from Calabufo in the Oswego zone zone. The puck gets lost. He goes back, picks it up, turns around. Skates with it for a second, finds Cahill wide open on the side, and he knows that if he gets it to him, he's going to get a shot on net. He does so. Now the Lakers, they just got to ride it out for the last two minutes, but they've got a pretty sound lead here, Jared. Yes, they do. Two minutes to go in regulation here. And we had talked about a little bit that top line not producing. And that game in Plattsburgh, Kyle, was getting a little closer. It was 2-1 at the end of the second there, but Plattsburgh now... Up 4-1 to one over the Geneseo Ice Knights. So it looks like it's going to be a whiteout rematch right here in the dead. And this is a storybook season. I mean, you can't ask for a better ending than that to the season. A rematch, a whiteout here in the dead. I mean, fire me up, Jared. That's electric. Turn me up, Speezy. Turn me up. That one gets over Ryan Bunker. Cal Shell, little Marty Brodeur action as he fires that puck. Lakers not quick to get on it. Was part of me was hoping to see a goalie goal there either way, whichever team. Nothing better than the playoffs and some goalie action. That'll go for icing. Emil Norman skating towards the bench again. Looking at his coach. Looks like they might try to pull him again. I mean, hey, what's it what's it hurt at this point? If you don't pull him, then you never know what might happen. It doesn't happen. hurt his stats or yeah. anything. You never know if it's going to drop it down and get the op opportunity to close this game a little bit more, kill the momentum of the Lakers. I mean, if it doesn't, they got to. if they do end up scoring again, I mean, it's already a three-goal lead. That's going to be tough to battle Barkan's back from. Arkan's going to get a penalty left. here, Kyle. He took a Buffalo State Bengal down. So this game will end on the penalty kill for the Lakers, and that's been the story of this game, that six minutes of penalties that they were able to kill off there. Massive for Oswego State there and let's kick off the second period and Arkan, you see here on the replay, yeah, he kind of just hauls Van Newton down. Can't do that. Yeah, no, like you said, you can't do that. Now the Lakers are going to be down a player for the next minute and four seconds. That's all that's remaining here in the game. I'm really surprised they don't pull Norman here. Get the six on four man advantage and try to tuck another one back behind the net. That might be why, Kyle, the puck immediately saucered down and 55 seconds to go. A storybook season for the Buffalo State Bengals. Last year, this team well out of the playoffs, but boy, Coach Steve Murphy and his coaching staff, a whale of a job to turn the ship around. Finished the year off pretty solid, 14-12 and one, eight and eight in the conference. Comfortably made the playoffs. Took down a Cortland team that many had favored to be the spoiler in this SUNYAC championship finals and the semifinals so far. Buffalo State looking to get one more on on the power play in the Lakers. Looking to add another feather in the cap of that penalty kill. And the Laker faithful getting nice and loud here. Cheering the Lakers away to victory with 15 seconds left. All they have to do is drain this one out. There is no chance for the Bengals now. 10 seconds left to go in the play, Jared. What a game it's been. Yeah, I mean, this is certainly, I don't think, Kyle, this is how we expected it to go. Not at all. Time winds down. The student section lights up. The gold pom-poms are high in the air. And the Oswego State Lakers are moving on to the Sydney Championship right here in the Deborah F. Stanley Ice Arena Convocation Hall next week against the Plattsburgh Cardinals. And we have a whiteout rematch in stores here in the Deb. This is a storybook season for the Lakers. I mean, they came in. One of the favorites in the in the SUNYAC. We knew that they were going to be a solid team this year, but there's always that overlooming threat of Geneseo. And can Geneseo just can they get past Geneseo? That's been the determining factor the last couple of seasons. Geneseo's out now to Plattsburgh. I mean, Plattsburgh down season last year. They really picked it up a huge amount this season, battling their back way their way back to the number two seed. And the Lakers. With that competition, they were solid the start of the season. They had that rough stretch in the middle where we didn't know where they were going to place in the in the playoffs. But I mean, hey, they're st they're hosting a Suniac final now here. Yeah, and I mean, you know, here's the thing. At the end of the day, Kyle, as well, is that 
you know, the nice thing about Buffalo State, taking a look at the opposition here, it ain't over for Buff State. It's not like this was no. their one shot they had at a playoff run here. You know, you look at things, a lot of freshmen on this team that have made a big impact on the defensive end as well. You know, Leonard and Todorov took the penalties by pretty solid games. Otherwise, Chris Blango, a freshman as well, heard his name a lot tonight, and they're, I believe they're only losing one or two seniors. Here's Andrew Logar. He was pretty big tonight. Hayton Ford will go as well, but a lot of youth on this team. They won't use Emil Norman or Nikita Cozy, Rev, unless they elect to transfer. They've got another year, a couple more years of eligibility. So it is not a story over for the Buffalo State Bengals, a fairly new program in terms of the SUNYAC. They came around in 1993. Oswego has dominated that, but Oswego a lot of years to develop the program to get this nice arena in Buffalo State. A couple years may work their way to maybe a facility like this. They have a pretty nice facility at Buffalo State there in downtown Buffalo, but you could easily see them start to build a program, have a winning season or two, yeah, build I mean, things up, and I think Buffalo State, pretty good pick for a team that might be on the come up in the next 10 years. Yeah, I mean, like you said, this is a rebuild team. They had a really rough season last year. Didn't even make the playoffs, but this year they made a decent run to the playoffs. They make it to the semifinals. This is not a season to hang your head down if you're the Buffalo State Bengals. This was a big improvement. You've shown that you can really fight with the tougher teams in the SUNYAC. I mean, a 4-1 loss and one of them being an empty net goal, they played one heck of a game here. And the Deb is probably the hardest environment in D3 hockey to come into and play an opposing game, especially with the Laker faithful all golded out, just going ballistic up there tonight. And you know, I imagine while a lot of these pl players are out on the ice, as they announce the stars of the game, third star Troy Robillard, I imagine many of them looking at that SUNY A championship banner just behind them near the top of the concourse. 2014, the last time the Lakers won nine years to look to try and end that drought next weekend. And fun fact, the last time the Lakers won the SUNYAC, you know who they played in a semifinal game here at home? Buffalo State. So Tommy Cahill, the number one star on the ice for the Lakers. Everybody in the bear hug, and you know who else is on the ice? Michael Shetler and Melinda Brancato. They're down there, and it looks like they've got assistant coach John Whitelaw. So, Shet, take it away with Whitey. Thank you, gentlemen. We are here with assistant coach John Whitelaw. And John, what an atmosphere here tonight. The Lakers get the win, heading to the SUNYAC championship. What can you attribute to that? Oh, just a great team effort through and through. 60 minutes all the way through. Good goaltending, smart decisions by our D. And our forwards capitalized on the chances we got. So it's a good team win. Absolutely. And home SUNYAC championship, how does that come into play and how does that change the preparation coming into next week? Oh, it's huge. I mean, I don't know if it's going to change our preparation, but it's definitely going to be a bit of an advantage uh, you know, against whoever we play. No better place to play, especially for a title than here. And, you know, uh, we'll, we'll prepare like it, you know, any other game, wherever it would be. You know, we'll be ready and we're excited for the opportunity. Without a doubt, and you got to be mighty proud of this team. What's your thoughts on their performance and their overall, the, uh, the, the amount that they were able to accomplish this season? Yeah, no, it's it's been a bit of a roller coaster, but I don't think we'd be here without some of those ups and some of the downs, right? So for them to you know be finding it here at the right time of year, that's huge. And, and we're excited for, again, like that opportunity next week. That's the goal we set at the start of the year, and now we have the opportunity to achieve it. So, Without a doubt, Coach, best of luck. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, we're sending it back to you. Go Lakers. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Michael Shetler, back up here in the Steve Levy press box. And for myself and Kyle Spizak, that's going to do it as the rink empties out. Everybody head at home nice and happy. I'm sure Bridge Street will be packed tonight as the Lakers secure a 4-1 to -one victory over the Buffalo State Bengals and declaw those kittens. But for myself and Kyle Spizak, so long and sayonara. We will see you next Saturday for the SUNYAC championship match between Oswego State and the Plattsburgh Cardinals. But don't go anywhere. The postgame show is coming up next. Jacob Bradley, Luke Rosenthal, and Thomas Tallarino over there on the perch overlooking the rink. They'll give you all the details as we get you wrapped up tonight and ready to go for next Saturday. Say, hey, President Stanley, whenever there's bad weather, who would you turn to? I'd turn to Storm Team 10. No, right but here. you've got to say it like this. Storm Team 10. Say it with me. Storm, Storm Team 10.
Roll it. Jill Shreed told me it was Kitty from Glee. Yeah, what it's is it? It's Al Roker. <laughs> The Lakers have signed, sealed, and delivered their ticket to the SUNYAC Championship. Final score from the Deborah F. Stanley Ice Arena. Lakers 4, Buffalo State Bengals 1. But we welcome back up to the perch. We got Jacob Bradley, Luke Rosenthal, Tommy Tallarino, and joining us is the man looking as handsome as ever, Mr. Michael Shetler. Gentlemen. Yeah, you're too kind, making me blush. Oh, well, that's <laughs> nice. But uh, we welcome you on to the perch. The Lakers are going to the SUNY Finals. Gentlemen, let's get your opening thoughts. Yeah, it was a great game, obviously, for these Lakers. They're very physical out there. A lot of penalties, some five-minute majors, some penalties that probably should have been five-minute majors. Hell, even, oh, excuse me. Even, even, <laughs> even a ref took a bump. One more yeah. bump, and it would have been yeah. a Roman Reigns versus Sammy's A-Man, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'll give me one more chance. <laughs> My bad. Um, I mean, what an offensive onslaught by the Lakers. They were getting shots on that left and right. What'd you see down there on the ice? Mr. You know, I, I was running around like Roadrunner down there. I didn't see much. I caught, I caught the moments that count. 4-1 victory. Absolutely astonishing. I think that the team's going to celebrate with some fresh mud straight from the garden. Ooh. And I think they're going to celebrate. They're going to have a ball tonight. But they got some bigger fish to fry next week in the SUNYAC Championship where it all goes down. Well, the Lakers are advancing to that SUNYAC Championship. Championship. Let's take a look at that game summary from this game today. The Lakers pretty much dominated just about every facet of this one here tonight, gentlemen. Yeah, the Lakers in every facet. Yeah. Look at just look at the shots. 59 to 24, 37 to 16 shots on goal. Still not great from the power play. That's something that we've been criticizing these Lakers for pretty much for a majority of the season, but all out dominance to a team that they've dominated in the past, Tommy. Yeah, I mean, just look at the face-offs right there, 49 to 22. They were managing the puck left and right. They did not let it leave the offensive zone, I'll no. tell you that. No, absolutely. I mean, the more things change, the more they stay the same. It looks like the Lakers, I mean, not looks, the Lakers certainly had the Bengals number this season with a three-peat and heading on. I mean, yeah, they definitely outplayed them almost the whole game. That's a clean victory if I've ever seen one. A very clean victory, a victory that you're going to want behind you going into a team like what we're assuming is those Plattsburgh State Cardinals. Well, let's give you that final update from the North Country as to exactly what the Lakers might be looking at. We're going to give you a little crystal ball vision here as to what the Lakers might be looking at into the future. Uh-oh. little preview. Uh -oh. It's coming. We hear it. Let's, here we let's go. Get, the, get the energy going. Get the animation going. Here we go. <laughs> it's almost there. Come uh, on. Who All right. talk about it? <laughs> here we go. There it is. Genesee <laughs> falling to those Plattsburgh State Cardinals 5-1. I mean, first of all, very even shots from both sides. Plattsburgh, I mean, 42 shots faced and one allowed in. That's some good numbers right there. Yeah, Plattsburgh has beat Genesee here twice this season, making it another time in the playoffs here. 5-1, they come out victorious and are going to head to the Deb here. Even though they're ranked higher nationally than this Lakers team, some say they probably shouldn't be because they're the number two seed in the SUNYAC, but it should be a great matchup next week. Psh. But, I mean, the Ice Knights, they cannot fly with them birds, it looks like that. 5-1 Plattsburgh. I mean, they just peppered them with shots. Plattsburgh just find the back of the net a little bit more right there. I think we're in for an amazing matchup next weekend. Absolutely. The Ice Knights have melted away, and the Plattsburgh Cardinals are up to bat here on the ice. It's going to be one heck of a game. It's going to be a thriller. And I'll have the pleasure of being... I don't know. I'll be, I'll be here somewhere. Somewhere. Somehow. Somewhere. Somehow. Somewhere. Somewhere. We all yeah. hope we will be. But, yeah, <laughs> Je Plattsburgh swept the Ice Knights throughout this season undefeated against Geneseo. And Geneseo, a little bit of a change in, in the pace here. They're a little goosebumps. They're going to be watching <laughs> from googly, the sideline, watching at home, maybe watching WTOP. Who knows? But let's take a look right now at the bracket and what is now pretty much a finalized bracket. The only thing we're looking for is that winner of the SUNYAC. Of course, Buffalo State, the only upset in this entire SUNYAC. But, yeah. 
It comes down to, once again, the two old rivals, the two old friends, Oswego State and Plattsburgh. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit. Oswego and Brockport and the men's basketball were on a little bit of a collision course to meet in the SUNYAC finals. And you can say the same for this Oswego State and Plattsburgh team. These are two teams date back forever ago. These have been rivals forever. They sort of split throughout the season. Oswego two, leads them 2-1. But, yeah, should be a great one. Yeah, I mean, down goes Frazier right there, Plattsburgh and Geneseo. Goliath has fallen, folks. Geneseo no longer in the SUNYAC championship, which seems like forever ago yeah. since they weren't in there. So we go Plattsburgh. I can't wait to white out version two, folks. I don't know about you guys. Absolutely. Four words. Chucky, ducky, quack, quack. <laughs> oh. I am ready for a battle. <laughs> oh. All right, uh, I guess it's my turn to talk. I don't know what I'm say, supposed to say. Gotta, say. <laughs> gotta end it with a bang, you know? Oh, man, get your bagels ready, folks, at home, because the whiteout part two is coming back to the Deborah F. Stanley Ice Arena. That's going to do it for us. Hopefully we have something going on here next week with a variation of the four of us, but if we don't, we're going to have three other fine gentlemen or women up here with us instead. We'll see you next week. The Lakers are heading to the Suniac Championship for director Michael Griswold, producer Thomas Turgeon. Kyle Spizak, Jerry Wakefield, Luke Rosenthal, Tommy Tellerino, Michael Schell. It's been a long day. Cameron Jacob Bradley, and Blake. everybody else that's worked this game tonight. We'll see you all next week. We'll see you at the SUNYAC Championships. Yeah.